Friday. Woo! Hi! I'm here! Oh wait, shit, I'm not here. Oh my god, I forgot to turn on my camera again. I'm here, I swear. Uh, uh, I started my stream without my camera again. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, there I am. Ah, I exist. There. Oh, great. I'm, oh. Why do I forget to turn on my camera sometimes? <laughs> anyway, I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everybody, where I can pretend that I'm 5,000 IQ in this game for yet another day. Yay! Good morning! <laughs> Uh, I, I honestly have not thought about the case at all, no. Um, I haven't really thought about this case at all since the last, since... When was it? Tuesday? Tuesday was my last stream. So... Nope, haven't had any thought on it whatsoever. In fact, I think I forget most of the case, so that's also gonna... That, that's gonna be really bad. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come back to me really fast, because we didn't finish the investigation, so it'll all come back to me as we, like, finish it up. But, yeah. Oops, I didn't have time to think about it. Yeah, we do have new BTTV emotes as per the request. Yeah, I don't know why the wide people sad is so small. Um, I couldn't find a version that was actually, like, wide. I tried looking. I don't know if I'm just, like, maybe blind. But the only ones that I found were, like, uh, two-part emotes. I don't know where the wide are the wines are that's so weird to say hold on let me take a look i did try looking it's just weird the smallest white people i know but i couldn't get like the actual long one yeah i don't know i know rip chihiro i did watch the game awards yeah there wasn't any breath of the wild too <laughs> Oh, anyway, no, <laughs> it's not the only game that I care about. Um, I was, I was genuinely surprised to see that we are getting a, a Sonic open world game. I'm, I'm actually, that sounds incredibly fun if they do it right. So uh, I'm excited about the Sonic uh, open world shit. Not to mention the movie looked fucking amazing, actually. Like, I'm genuinely so surprised. <laughs> Uh, Late Night Saints, thank you so much for the tier 1 sub, I appreciate it! I know! The Breath of the Wild 2 uh, is honestly really surprising because I thought that, like, the uh, not rumored time, I forget. I thought that Nintendo said that Breath of the Wild 2 would be around, like, early, uh, or not early, just like spring season. So this would be, like, a fantastic time to advertise the game at the Game Awards, so... Uh, but I guess it might be coming late 2022 at this point, so probably a whole other year. <laughs> Sunbreak. That did look cool. I'm really excited about, uh, I think, Forspoken was my... I'm, I'm still excited about Forspoken. Ever since Square announced it, like, two years ago, I've been... That's been a game that I've had my eye on for a long time. And Horizon Zero Dawn, of, of course, looks really good. I still have to play the first one, though, which I will stream. So I think with my current lineup of games, after the Danganronpa 3 games, I'm going to play the Final Fantasy XIV and Walker MSQ. And then after that, I should have time to play Horizon Zero Dawn before the second one releases. I'm thinking I can get all that done. If not... I'll have to cut something short and do... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. But regardless, I'm gonna finish the Danganronpa stream, so at some point I gotta do the Horizon this game before the second one comes out. While also playing all the Dark Souls games. We have so many games that we're gonna be playing in the next couple months, I'm sorry. We're gonna be... Whew, we're gonna be gamers. <clears throat> I didn't watch the Elden Ring. As soon as they said, like, Elden Ring new trailer, I was like, nope. I didn't watch it. I don't, I don't like watching extra stuff and footage. 13 Sentinels, I am going to play in April because it's getting ported. I do already have the game, but it's, uh, like, on a business standpoint because what I do is 
a business. I like to play games whenever they're like relevant. Um, so 13 Sentinels is getting a resurge in April, so I'll be playing it then. You're sorry? I, I don't know! Did I actually say sorry? Wait, what did I say sorry for? Oh my god, it's so... What did I say sorry for? Oh my god. I am that fucked up, dude. I keep getting distracted too. Yeah, that's such a mood. I keep getting distracted by Horizon. Like other games. 13 Sentinels is also in that boat. Ooh, everything okay? Yeah? Okay. Uh, but yeah. 13 Sentinels in April. Finally. God, I've been so excited to play this game. <laughs> so yeah, heck yeah, we gonna be playing it. Oh, I said I'm sorry because you're playing so many games. Did I really? Oh. <laughs> Hi, I have problems. Uh. Aww, that's really sweet. <laughs> but yeah, we do have a lot of, um. I, I gotta write that one down. That's, that's an interesting thing I just did. This is, <laughs> okay, I don't think I ever mentioned this, but um, is, is it irony that my um, my SMT5 notebook that Atlas sent me is my mental health notebook? This is like my, my journal. <laughs> my SMT5, hmm. <laughs> what a weird journal. Okay, I'll, I'll add more to that note later, but I just wanted to write it down. <laughs> Irony at its finest, yeah. <laughs> also, Fortunate, thank you so much for the, for the tier one sub, I appreciate it. <laughs> it is though, it is. I don't know, it's just like, I now, I'm getting so many notebooks from companies. So I was, I, I've never had a mental health journal in my life before and I was like, well, I have a bunch of notebooks and uh, I should probably write down my thoughts <laughs> so I can like actually improve my mental health a little bit faster because writing down stuff really uh, helps you internalize a lot. So yeah, I've been actually journaling for the first time ever. <laughs> SMT is the most sane franchise to write down your emotions. Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, I haven't played any SMT5 off stream ever, ever since like the, the 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 thing I did for Atlas. Like they required me to play an hour of the game. I haven't played any more than that now. All I know is that I loved playing the first hour of the game, and I am very upset that I can't play the rest of it right now. Um, but I I eventually will. I eventually will play it. <clears throat> oh, you guys are so sweet. Again, you guys are so sweet. Also, Minty, welcome to the streams. I appreciate it. And also, a lot of you guys are new here, so welcome to the streams. Is it if it's your first time? Yeah, I'm crazy. Just like my VODs. It's the same thing. <laughs> I have to wait until the holidays. Oof, you have to wait that long. That's that's rough, man. But yeah, we'll, I'll eventually play SMT. And I'll also eventually play the other SMT games. Like, I want to play all of them. <laughs> I did enjoy I did enjoy Nocturne a lot, and I, I'm very... Um, what's the word? I don't know, like, intrigued. I'm, I'm just, uh, like, I want to play more of the series. Uh, Devil Survivor is definitely something I'm looking at more than the others because uh, that's like my favorite genre of gaming. So yeah, I'm like, I'm genuinely so excited. There's so many games that I have to play. <laughs> I'll have content for like fucking decades. <laughs> oh my God, P4 Arena. Oh my God. So I was, well, one, I'm really excited that Atlas is actually like porting games. So, you know, you know, first, 
Persona 4 Golden gets a port last year, and then now we're, they're working on Ultimax, but like, it makes me excited because this pretty much guarantees that Atlas is actually porting slowly all of their games, like they're working on it, which is so nice. Um, so yeah, that's if, like, obviously I'm not much of a, like, I'm not into fighting games that much. I don't like them, but it is really nice to see that they're actually porting. Like, Thank it's only good news, <laughs> which is fantastic. Also, are you planning on playing Dongan Ron for another episode? It's not on the Switch. Wait, uh, I totally... Um, uh, thank you for the four months. I'm just playing the first, just, just, pl I'm just playing Danganropa 1, 2, 3. Any other spin-offs, I'm, I'm do another time or if, uh, the thing is, I can't say if I'm playing the other games, the other si spin-offs and side games, if I don't enjoy the main game. So it's really hard for me to tell you guys if I'm going to be playing all the other shit whenever I don't even know if I like the series. I mean, I just started, so... I mean, right now I'm having a good time, but I only play side games and spin-offs if I enjoy the base game, like, a lot. So, um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, I have to really be obsessed with the game to go for spin-offs. But yeah, um... We'll see, we'll see. <clears throat> yeah, I do think... I don't know. Uh, I, I do think that people are getting their hopes up a little bit too high. Uh, like, mm, I don't know. I just feel like a lot of people are setting themselves up for disappointment. I genuinely don't think a P5 port is happening within the year. I think that it'll be at least... Like, if I had a prediction, I do think that P5R won't be ported for at least, like, two to four years in that time range. I don't think it's happening anytime soon. But I do think it will happen. But not anytime soon. I know it's, like, heavily requested. But I would be so surprised if it happened any sooner than, like, two years. Between one and two and is important in the three anime. Uh, thank you so much for the 100 bits. By the way, uh, am Animature, thank you so much for the one, uh... I was gonna say one year resub, but but for 11 months, that's almost a year. Thank you so much. I have a hard time believing comments like that. Because, I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna be fine. If it was really that important, they would have put it in this uh, bundle. Uh, as far as like, I need to do something before I play V3. I mean, I'm not concerned about it. People told me that it was like, Absolutely. God, I think I'm actually annoyed by the fact that like 90% of the World Ends With You fans told me that playing A New Day and Another Day from the final remix version, the first game, they were like, oh, you have to watch it. It's essential for playing Neo. It is not essential for playing Neo. It's not. I don't know why people said that. <laughs> Now it's fun and it's like a precursor, but you absolutely do not need to do that shit before playing Neo. It is not necessary. <laughs> People tell me these things and I just straight up don't believe it anymore. <laughs> but I'm not saying like, you know, it's good to play those things for like more context, but the information that's both in the secret reports and a new day is just meant to be extra things. You do not need to watch it. And the amount of people that are harping at me, like, oh my god, by the way, you have to do this before you play Neo, or you're not gonna understand Neo at all. Everyone like goes off like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> like, no, you're, you're good. It's just a setup. That's all it is. It's just a setup. But yeah, that's me going off, because yeah, uh, holy shit. Even if you go and look at, um, if you look at my comments right now on like my final uh, The World Ends With You uh, video that I put out last week, 90% of those comments are talking about having to watch a new day, like it's an essential thing. I'm not saying don't do it, but holy hell, chill. The thing is, I... Yeah, like, I'm gonna play the main games of Danganronpa 1, 2, 3, and then, like I said, I'll go back, and if I'm interested in the series and wanting to know more, 
Uh, then I will go through the other stuff in the anime and side games, whatever, but I know it's not essential to play the main three games. <clears throat> like, it's not like I cannot play the game <laughs> or I will not understand anything about the game without it. It's just extra fluffy context stuff that like builds to the story, but is not truly like essential to your experience of the game is how I feel. It's very much over exaggerated by a lot of people. <laughs> But I probably will. Like, one thing I still want to do is, uh, The World Ends With You, I want to go back and actually watch the anime. I know it's just, like, the same thing, but I know there are extra things in the anime that I were really interested in watching, and I love The World Ends With You, so, uh, you know, I do that as a result of, like, okay, if I really like the series, then I do all the extra things, but I don't want to do it prior to, because, um, it also could lead to, like, burnout when you're like saturated with so much of this like extra content side stuff that isn't like just the main games. And I do, I try to watch out for that because as I'm playing three games in a row back to back to back, it's a, uh, you know, I don't want to get myself too saturated too fast, especially if I don't know if I'm going to like it. I know, oh, you see these little Nahabino back there, isn't he so cute? He's so cute, he's so cute. What? Oh, Dom's salty because it's his sock. <laughs> Dom. I can... The thing is... Oh, you sounded salty. Oh, I thought you sounded salty. I can put it in mine. <laughs> I was gonna switch it, he got mad. Like, no, it stays in mine! <laughs> The main issue people have with Ultra Despair Girls is that the gameplay is completely different. Thank you for the 100 bits! But yeah, stop talking about it. <laughs> it's not an invitation to talk about it, especially whenever... Yeah, that's, uh... Yeah, no. But! Now I kind of want to change my plushie. The thing is, my stocking is a little bit more full than Dom's, so... The issue is in the weight of the hook. I don't want to add too much weight because then it might drop down. The, the stockings are already quite heavy. And Dom's is a little bit less full, so that's why I put Nahabino in that one. But then I, I could... Oh, um... I think it'd be better if he was placed, like, a little bit over. So maybe I just switch the stockings. Uh-uh. Got it. Thank you for the Prime Gaming sub, I appreciate it. <laughs> uh... Yeah, stockings are true. Wait, do you guys not do stockings in Europe? I've actually, we've never discussed that. But yeah, they're like the norm here. My mom grew up with it, uh, I mean... Yeah, we grew up with it, and then also in, in, yeah, I moved to Canada, and a lot of my friends do stockings here, too. <laughs> yeah. You guys do it in the UK, not in Mexico, not in Germany. Huh, that's interesting. You put a slipper on the windowsill? Oh, I've heard about the slipper thing. I've heard about that. Oh, I did not know. I thought stockings were more universal. Okay, wow, this is interesting. You've done it in Norway since the 80s. Yeah, there is like, my stocking is filled with like candy and small presents, just very, very small things. Usually my mom would put small things like a chapstick, socks, 
Just like very tiny things that you can like throw in there and then fill it with candy kind of thing. We sometimes use boots. Yes, I've heard about boots being used. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. I've heard about that. Wow, this is so fascinating. Italy has socks, but in, uh, has the socks, but in Italy it's a little bit different. How does it go? Oh, this is so cool. Okay, good. You still have presents under the tree. Yeah, there's still presents. I got presents. My mom sent me them. <laughs> Parking chair energy. What? What does that mean? I don't understand. Yeah, chocolates in the stocking. I do got chocolates in mine, but I'm trying not to touch it until Christmas. I'm trying my very best, but they're in there. I just can't. I'm not allowed to touch it. I can't do it. It's like illegal. I'd be breaking a sacred rule if I took the candy out of the stocking this early. I'm the one who put the chocolate in the socks in the first place. <laughs> I put it in there. <laughs> I don't know. It's not torture because I don't really think about it. <gasps> oh, people put out parking. Oh God, that's a Pittsburgh thing. I thought a lot of places did that. Yeah. Oh my God, that is embarrassing. <laughs> But yeah, that's it's pretty common in Pittsburgh to like put your chairs out on a parking spot to like save it. Does any other place do that? <laughs> oh, Philly does it too. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, and then also I, what I find funny is like uh, for the 4th of July parade where I grew up, down like the main street where the parade took place, people would like put a line of chairs along the sidewalk like three days before the parade so that those chairs were theirs and uh that's where they would be sitting for the parade it, it's like if i don't i don't think boston too okay so pittsburgh isn't the only place that does this <laughs> yeah you just like you put your chair in a parking spot or on the sidewalk for a parade like that's very normal What's my favorite candy? I don't know. My favorite candy changes like every year. It's like a crunch bars. I love crunch bars, Mars bars, slash Milky Ways, um, and Kit Kats. And Twix. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Milky Ways, yeah. Mars bars are Milky Ways pretty much. There's a very, very slight difference, but pretty much the same. <clears throat> yeah, there would just be chairs there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of that chair thing. Yeah, I think it might be. Maybe it's like just Eastern USA. Maybe it sounds like. That seems weird. I have always considered chocolate candy, but... It's, you know, it's one of those things that I really don't want to think about. <laughs> like, if I could think about anything, those are topics I typically avoid with my brain. Like, you know, when people are like, a hot dog is a sandwich because there's two pieces of bread in between. Like, that, those kinds of things, I just, I do not engage the thought. I'm gonna be real. It, my brain has much better things to think about than if chocolate is candy and if hot dog is a sandwich and if cereal is soup you know i don't go there <laughs> i just don't I just... <laughs> no <laughs> fuck off you know i would rather spend my brain power thinking about like the meaning of life and like what is happiness and like you know those kinds of existential things <laughs> Oh my god. What is happening? That is... Wait. That's unreal. That's not even real. Those bits are fake. I'm in disbelief. Wait, no. What? 
Pikes, are you okay? <laughs> Pizza is a salad? Oh my god. Yeah, these things, no. Like, not worth my brain power to think about. <laughs> no. <laughs> Holy shit, but no, really, what? <laughs> Pikes, why are you giving me 10,000 bits, dude? That's insane. That's just, no, I don't deserve that. Get out of here! Ah! They're fake! <laughs> you can't even do that on Twitch, man. Like, with PayPal, if someone sent me a $100 donation on PayPal, I would almost expect it to get charged back. Like, I, to get a charge back on it, like, I wouldn't even believe it. <laughs> but on Twitch, you can't charge back, so I guess it's real. Damn. Well, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Pike. Seriously, thank you so much for the 10,000 bits. That is insane. Ah, and Overplay, thank you for the 100 bits as well. Also, ah. Oh, oh my god, you guys are... I hate this. Oh my god, is that Shenpai? Shenpai, I'm your biggest fan! Ah, she's in my chat, that's crazy! Guys, 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 that's Shenpai! She she does like really she makes like really cool content and she's like really funny and she's kind of a great person. You guys should go follow her. Oh my god, she's in my chat. She said my name? You said my name! Wait, did you? Wait, no, you didn't. Oh you did! You did say my name! Oh my god, she said my name! She like typed it out. That's crazy! Hi! I'm fangirling. Hi. The real Shen Pai. <laughs> Hi, I love you, Shen. I hope you're doing good this morning. I'm your number one fan. Oh, I am. I'm having a good day. You know what I want to do? I'm trying to fight my anxiety a little bit because you know how, like, um... I do my weekly dance studio sessions, uh, and I've been recording them and uploading them onto YouTube, but I want to live stream it. Uh, and I don't know if I want to do that for my next session or wait a week, but I really should fight my anxieties on it. I think I should just fucking do it. It just, I just have to figure out the setup of like how to live stream it. Uh, but yeah, I, I kind of want to do it. So like, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm feeling good, but I'm nervous because I want to, I want to stream my dancing, and I keep thinking about it in the back of my brain today. Like, oh man, I, I, I want to do it. I want to do it. You know nothing about Dang Roper except one hour I played it and hated it. Oh god! What did you- what- wait, what Dang Roper game did you play? Do you even remember? <clears throat> I'm enjoying it so far. It's really fun. Oh, you played the first one. Okay, so you're- you probably- okay. Because I just started the first one last week, so we're not very far into it. Use the big, big screen there to read the chat. That's the problem I have because, um, uh, the thing is I don't want to read chat at all, so I have to fight that anxiety too because it would just be a stream that you watch. Like, zero interaction. I would not be reading chat at all. Like, I'm just going to be in my head and being in the dance studio dancing for an hour. It's just a one hour stream. And yeah, um, there's no, there would be no interaction. Like I'm not gonna step away from my uh, practice to read chat. I don't want to read chat. So yeah, that's like, there would be zero interaction. It'd be like watching like a TV show or something, except a lot worse. <laughs> You couldn't stand it and you didn't want to touch it again. Oh my god, damn, girl. That's fair, that's fine. That's totally valid. Yeah, these, these games are not, um, like this type of game and gameplay, I don't feel like Just it's for everyone, so that's totally fine. What better way to unwind than jazz and child murder. Thank you for the 100 bits, Amida. I appreciate it. Oh my god. Also, I hope your three hour exam went well. Congrats, you made it out. <laughs> mm hmm. Visual novels need like a three hour roll. 
Yeah, like if I don't like an anime after three episodes, I typically don't watch. Actually, like after two or one episode sometimes. Yeah, sometimes it's just not worth it. If you don't vibe with it, you don't vibe with it. <clears throat> <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Um, I really want to do a dance stream. It's going to be different than the dancing streams we did before because it's like actual like dance practice sessions, not me learning dance. Uh, not me like learning persona dances like we did to, to what like we did twice before. It's completely different. If you haven't watched my um, my uploads of my studio practices, it's just that. But I want to live stream it, so it's very um, very different. You're literally watching someone practice an art. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. With with zero interaction, so yeah. So far, yeah, I'm vibing with the game. I am. I enjoy like the the gameplay and the characters are interesting. As long as I'm intrigued by something, I latch onto it really fast. Like as you can telling my current playthrough of playing Danganronpa. I've latched on to a few things. <laughs> I've immediately latched on to Byakuya and Kyoko because they, Kyoko because they uh, interest me. Like when characters intrigue me, that is something that keeps me playing a game because uh, I want to find out the mystery behind them. Uh, and besides that, obviously like the, the whole concept of the game is so intriguing to where it makes me want to figure out like where it's going to go from from here. <clears throat> I do. I always fall for smart characters. Always. Like if somebody is smart in any game, you'll just, just guarantee that I'm going to like them. <sighs> I like smart people, man. Just always. I don't know why. Well, I do know why, It's but like, it's just, man, I hate it. <laughs> I'm so predictable. <laughs> I do like the big brain. Yeah, when people think outside the box. That goes for IRL too. any series that really gets me thinking especially when it comes to like an existential level which is why i obviously had a lot of respect for um like of the three persona games that i've played like five i hold the closest um just because i guess existentially it got me thinking about a lot of shit way more than the other two games did like um i do appreciate three for making me really think about like the concept of death a lot which is obviously like a really heavy one to think about um four i didn't really get anything out of but five like taught me so much um in terms of like what do I, like, what is my justice? You know, like, it gets you thinking about, like, really existential topics. <laughs> like, man, I, I love that. I really do love that whenever, whenever a game, like, it just veers off in a way that you, it just really makes you think in a way that you would not normally think. It, I really, really appreciate that. So... It's why I've, like, it's why I stick to P5, and that's what's the beauty of video games, like, something six there's always something different out there for everybody everybody vibes with different things different themes different concepts different characters it's the beautiful world of rpgs and gaming in general but anyway let's play video games how does that sound Let's do that. It was really hard to stay on this screen and find like, <laughs> this is like the only corner of the screen that I could leave the starting soon screen on because then you scroll over and then <laughs> you just see this. I didn't want to leave you guys with this screen. Hmm, that would be very rude. All right, so somebody's dead. <laughs> By the way. Damn. All 
Alrighty. So, we're figuring out the mystery behind the murder, uh, which is uh, Genocide Jack. That's right, we, we are suggesting that this is Genocide Jack's doing. That's where we're at. Bloodlust. And somebody, not naming any names, Taco, has, uh, um, a oh god. There's like, there's a suggestion that Taco could, uh, was it bipolar disorder or schizophrenia? So she might be Genocide Jack. Justice. And they suggest I'm that Genocide justice. Jack might be a student. So, there's that. Um, taco shifty eyes. <laughs> but there's also other cases of the mystery Dinky that the other the parts of the mystery that are like, uh, uh, that kind of don't make sense still. So, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Multiple personality disorder. That's what they said. I couldn't remember which of the one. Disassociative identity disorder. All right. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, that could be uh, our taco friend. It is not Taco Tuesday. No, <laughs> no, it's Taco Friday. Hmm. <clears throat> uh, Chihiro's presence uh, here, especially, especially weak. Here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No forgiveness. No target such as a helpless being. It's unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I cannot forgive this. Sakura is very upset. I want to hear Kyoka's thoughts. I forget why we came here. I think so. I need to refresh my brain. Um, we just were in the. We went to the archives with Byakuya. He told us about Genocide Jack. Okay, yeah, we went to the Genocide Jack case file. All of the victims. Mounted on the wall, word bloodlust. Profiling indicates the killer is likely a student suffering from a split personality. Okay. And then we have the broken handbook, which doesn't quite make sense yet. I haven't quite pieced why this matters. There's obviously more to the case. It's not gonna be just like Taco did it as her split personality murdered, but she, I think, I think this case has to have an accomplice, but why would someone work with Taco? Maybe it's Biakia, actually. That would be interesting. They have a promise, if I remember correctly, that Biakia didn't want to talk about. <clears throat> okay. Junko and Sayaka's handbooks both seem to still work, so it assumed that the broken handbook is Leon's. Monokuma claims it's very unlikely that Leon's handbook would have been broken. But it has to be... Okay, so this is interesting. I'll come up with a theory for that. You have the card reader. Mo what was Mondo's account? Some assume that due to her inferior inferiority, inferiority complex about being weak, she admired strength more than anything else. Sakura's account was that... Shihiro wanted to get stronger. She declined several invitations from Sakura and Aoi and may have used the locker room late at night to avoid them. Oh, right, 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 because she was too shy. Shihiro had stated that she desired help with her efforts. Uh, she may have been meeting someone in the locker room the night that she was murdered. So, time of death is 2 a.m. Girl was in the locker room. Uh, cause of death was the blow to the head with a blunt object and was killed instantly and then mounted to the wall later. Which we're suggesting that it was this. The dumbbell. Okay. Um, Mondo. 
<clears throat> Dude had a real complex about being weak. You heard Chihiro talk about it, right? All I need to do is get stronger. Yeah, I don't. I do remember she said that more than once. Sure did, which I guess explains the trick down here. But did she really need to get stronger that badly? You already mentioned it, but she was a girl after all. Most girls aren't all that strong. Yeah. I don't know, man. Haven't really thought about that stuff. Right. Okay, Kyoko. Hey, Kyoko, have you made any progress on your investigation? Mm -hmm. Generally speaking. However. But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. What? Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well, nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. So then, before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time, thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. Oh. With that, Kyoko turned I and left the girls' locker room. I guess I'll take another look at the body then. Uh, sorry, I've been missing a lot. James, thank you so much for the seven month resub. Trip for the 100 bits. And uh, Ju, thank you so much for the 100 bits as well. I appreciate it. Chihiro's handbook is missing. That's definitely worth worrying about. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I'd better give it a shot anyway. Let's see. Chihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. Huh? This rope has a plug. Yeah! Wait, I thought that was obvious. It's the- it's from the archive room. So then this isn't a rope at all. But the more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Shihiro's fatal injury was the blow to the head, which means someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right, That's there's the issue of her being suspended and the fatal blow. At first I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. Yeah. Definitely. What does this all mean? Status of the dead body has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Well, the one thing most likely to tie all these mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chihiro. To figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Come on, we just did this! <laughs> Uh, all right, we'll go out. Oh, oh, we can't leave. Would they want us to recheck stuff? We already looked at everything. Uh, Bloodstained poster. The blood is the most no noteworthy part, but the big breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable, too. A girl's locker room doesn't seem like the kind of place that you'd find something like this. Can we rip it down? I guess we talk to them again? Damn. No forget Okay. Okay, very angry. Oh now I'm allowed to leave. Okay, they wanted me to examine the poster. Da -da 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 -da. Uh. Ding ding ding! Hifumi has discovered evidence revealing the identity of the culprit. I feel as if Another stat increase for me! Evidence, what did you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. That's it, but I I'm guarantee sure that what I found will steal the killer's breath 
from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm. Oh yeah, Miss mm. Ludenberg mm. said that she'd witnessed mm. something worthwhile too. Really, what did she see? Well, she refused to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies the boy she likes, right? Okay, so where is Celeste now? Mm. The warehouse mm. by the dorms. Mm. She was there, mm. but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Interesting. Huh, this poster. It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. But wait, that reminds me, the poster in the other locker room. That's definitely something strange about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe I should talk to someone who knows a little bit more about the locker rooms. Where is... Okay. We want to find mm -hmm. Owie and Celeste. Is that the only thing I need to look in here? I guess I should just... Oh! I didn't even notice the floor. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. Strange stain on the carpet. What is it? Boys' locker room carpet has been added to the tree. Hmm, what kind of a stain is that? I wouldn't even say that's dry blood, but like, what is it? It literally looks like someone wiped their ass on the carpet. Like they couldn't make it to the bathroom. Do I need to pay attention to this again? I don't know if it's gonna say something different. Actually, no, it's not gonna say anything different. No. Squats, man, they're dangerous! <laughs> Should I look at the card readers? No, we already did look at the card readers. Just in case I'll look at both, though. Okay, okay. And then this should be the same? Nope, okay. All right, all right. Why do they want me to go to the dining hall? Let's go to the archive room first, I feel. They also want me to go to the library? I'll go to the archive room first. Oh wait, no, we can't. Are they not letting me leave here? Oh, there's more to discover. Oh, fuck off. I guess I'll click everything. Maybe there was more in the boys' room. Yeah, besides... Huh. Do they let me go in the pool? They do. Although there's really, there shouldn't be anything here. Yeah, I doubt there's gonna be anything in the pool. I guess I could. No. It's such a weird, like, suspicious locker just staying back here. It's really weird. The room building itself around you. That's cool. Yeah, 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 you're right. It is really cool. It's a fun little way to traverse rooms.
so we've took it uh so we got the camera and we've noticed the gatling gun too i wonder if it's hmm no it's definitely plugged in i was thinking like maybe there's a circumstance where it just like wouldn't go off but that would be weird Yeah, that's what I think the carpet stain is. Someone just like, oops, missed the toilet. The victim suffered multiple stab wounds across his body, believed in, had to have been inflicted with the same scissors that were later used to attach the victim to the wall. Yeah, we're kind of missing that part, aren't we? I want to revisit that place, but you're not letting me leave here! Have I not looked? Mm. Oh. This was all new. Oops. Okay, I had assumed that it would be the same. <clears throat> Do you think the posters in the boys and girls locker rooms would have been switched? Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid any attention to the posters. I see, but there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little por protein coffee every time I finish, ex finish exercising. We have protein coffee? In the warehouse, it's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some of the coffee, uh, some of the carp, some, oh, that's what the stain is. It's not poop. Spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room and it left a stain. A stain. But I don't see any stain on the carpet now. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain had disappeared. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, isn't it unusually clean as if there was never a stain here to begin with? Ooh. Yeah, but that would be really strange. How would you switch the carpets when there's this much rigging involved? It's a little unreasonable. Hmm. Dude, I had a real complex about being weak. I do remember she said that more than once. Okay, so this is the same. I think we're allowed to leave now. That's gotta be it. Leave the area! Yay! I'm allowed to leave! Get me out of here, you son of a bitch! Let's just ignore this and go to where we want to go. The archive room. Yeah, the extension cord was in there before. That's the whole point! <laughs> Biaka, grab that one thing from over here and put it over there. It sure is dark over there. Hey, we got a coin. Gotcha coins. <laughs> Document about the secret council revealing the truth of a commoner shouldn't go to here, so I guess I'd better not. I want to take another look at Genocide's Jack's case file. It's gone! Did someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that, I can't think of anyone but Bianchia. Hmm. I've got to admit, I, I'm kind of perplexed. 
I think I have some of the case figured out, but then a lot of other things don't make sense, so it's a weird phenomenon. The lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here, but last time I saw it, it was definitely on and it was definitely right here. Bianchia was using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Oh boy. What would... What would Byakuya gain? I think that part doesn't quite make sense to me. Byakuya, you know, comes across as kind of selfish. So... He would have to gain something out of this. That doesn't make sense, no matter how I look at it. Uh, I'll think about it later. Oh, Hina! How's Togo doing? Hmm. Same as before, she won't come out, and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so, I just left her there. You left her. My head was all swimmy and I was getting pretty hungry. Yeah! Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Coco's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you eating? Huh? A donut, of course! <sighs> There's two things I'm good- I'm sure God created. Outer space and donuts! Really? Hmm. I bet you Hiro would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Aww. I should have tried to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Well... She was a little bit strange, didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like, like she was trying to keep her distance from us. Actually, Sakura had said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally. It's true, and it wasn't just us either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know, she talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? Ah. Oh wait, maybe... Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. The law says that you can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Hmm. Wait, Celeste is supposed to be in here. Huh? Did it... Wait, am I... What? Oh, she's in the warehouse. Oh, oops. Huh. Celeste, what are you doing in here? <laughs> This warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there's an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse itself might misdirect you, but I see it was pointless. Then you did find something? <laughs> Very well, I will tell you and only you. Actually, last night I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What, really? Indeed. This was right before nighttime. Hmm? What are you doing out this late? Sorry it took so long to subscribe, oh, Crystal. Um, Folded hands. I was just. Hope you have a nice Christmas. Christmas tree. Aw, thank you, Addict. I appreciate it. Thank you for the two months. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the emotes. I said that twice. Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? 
How did you know? Because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Well, I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I, I assumed that she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she ignored the nighttime rule and headed directly to the little girl's locker room. If she hadn't broken our rule, none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girl's locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is there was no trace of the track jacket or duffel bag, still less said that she saw Shihiro carrying. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. Celeste's account has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Dinga donga bingo bongo, we did it! Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? No, I'm not ready. It's the moment -dong -dong you've all been waiting for! <laughs> the class trial! Thank you for the 100 bits, I appreciate it. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the... <laughs> I'm not ready for this. I, like, truly do not know. I need to put out a theory, man. Shit. So is everyone ready to... What? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yo, Taco's not here. And Taco is... You really don't remember? Come on! Kidding! I'm just kidding! Could I... How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time! What are you gonna do? Okie dokie! I'll go ahead and drag her out here, kicking and screaming! Just one moment, please! And just like he said a few minutes later, he reappeared dragging Toko behind him. I told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible, you're terrible. Phew. So now everyone's here, right? Okay then, onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Jihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. And that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Yeah, someone standing right here. So the three main people in this case are Byakuya, Celeste, and Taco. Good morning, sorry I missed the DS2 stream. I can't stay today, I have a lot of homework, but I hope you enjoy it. I'll catch up on the vibes, Chris and Bill. Thank you for 100 bits. Um, okay. I'm super perplexed. I'm really perplexed because I don't really have anything to go on right now. Okay. Oh, man. I have a lot of thoughts. I just, I can't. Oh. Uh... I'm having the conundrum of my thoughts going like this, and I can't, like, throw a dart at my points and, like, make it stop. Hmm, I need to stop. Okay, uh, brain, stop, stop, stop. I need to get, like, a solid train of thought here. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. 
Taco has... Okay, so we need to, like, lay it down. This is supposed to look like Genocide Jack, but it's not. So, Taco might be... Okay, I don't think she did it. I think... Ah, oh, fuck! There has to be a male student involved here! The only one, the only male student it could have been is Byakia, though, in this case, but it just doesn't seem like... This is so weird. Um, maybe there doesn't have to be. I just, like... Between the three of them, I think that... I think... Okay, so here's what I think is going on. I'm so confused. I think Celeste did it. And I think that, um, I think that Celeste is trying to bl point the blame on Taco. In which Taco approached Byakia to try... I think that's what the promise they made. Is like, she did it, Celeste is trying to make it look like Taco did it. But uh, Byakia swoops it. No, but it's weird. It's weird. No, because that doesn't explain the library shit, man. Oh my god. But why does she know about the... I think the most sus thing is the fact that Celeste just gave us that information about the... The, the, the duffel bag. She gave us the information about the duffel bag, which nobody else knew about, and... Uh... Where did it go? So, does that mean that Byakia did it? I just... Oof. Oh my god, I'm losing brain cells. Did Byakia and Celeste work together on this? Who's the accomplice and who actually did it? I think that there is an accomplice here. I'm like, I don't know why I'm convinced about that. <sighs> okay. Uh, my my thoughts are so vague. Hmm. You ready? We doing this? Well, then. I will uncover the villain who performs such heinous acts on a weaker individual. <laughs> Sakura is so cute. Hmm. I don't know why the killer did what they did, but yeah, I'm sure it'll work itself out. Justice always prevails, right, bro? Shall we go? She hasn't even been present for this whole thing. Maybe she's looking into Byakia's past. She might- I wonder about that. Um, Miss Fuji- Miss Fu Miss Fujisaki, I must admit for being 3D, she was quite remarkable. Of course, she's the- just the idea of 3D makes me cringe. Oh my god. Hey, come on! Fucking taco, man! What's your god are so worked up? Yeah. She's going crazy. There is something odd about Taco's behavior. I do not think mere shock is enough to explain it. Oops. I can't get to Owie. I gave you plenty to work with. Show us how far your logic can take you. I think that you're trying so hard to be next to me so that I don't accuse you. But then again, someone also could be manipulating the library usage against you. It could go both ways! <laughs> I guess I wasn't much help at all on, uh, at all on this one. Owie, that's not true. Okay, I think I'm more convinced it's Celeste. Oh, but what if Byakia's cucking me? Oh, this smart ass, is he like playing the double game or the triple game, if you know what I'm saying. You don't know what I'm saying. Um, like, uh, reverse psychology, but like, uh, 
Am I getting reverse psychology by Biaki? <laughs> what? I gotta just do this, man. I think just thinking in my head isn't gonna really get me anywhere. It's true. I gave a small nod and reply. With one last deep breath, I walked toward. With each step, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't hand get a handle on my emotions. Couldn't stop speculating. Yeah, I can't stop speculating, that's for sure. The steel block sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground, and as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued Man, to descend Daniel's without grandpa. hesitation until finally. Hope! Thank you for the nine months. I appreciate it. I hope you keep enjoying the emo spin. <laughs> what do you think I re What do you think I redecorated? Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hmm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Good, good! You're rip-raring to go! Gotta say, I don't hate it! Not at well. all! Okay then, let's get this show on the road! Wheels, chills, kills! Please find your assigned seats! And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, a deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate. A deadly class trial! Oh boy. Hmm. What sort of five head game are we playing with fucking Biakia? Oh, now I un can understand these more. Increases the influence gauge by two effective class during trial. Okay. Oh, uh, it can have like more than one of these. I forget what these do. Uh, steadies your aim a little, effective during non subs of eight and hangman's gambit. Focus gauge decreases more slowly during concentration and fever time. Effective during. Okay. Increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. <sighs> Alright, this is gonna go terribly because I am kind of confused and I hate it. I normally have some better grasp. I, I have usually a better grasp on the situation. Let's begin so I imagine this is not gonna go well. Of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish Alan everyone is the killer. besides the back end, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Okay then. So, first off, Let's talk about the murder weapon! 
Okay, that's a good place to start with. I can do that. I can do that. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Locker room dumbbell. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? Oh, I forgot what button I'm supposed to push. Oh, oops, we fucked up. I should have kept going. <laughs> great start, great start! Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was Keep going. To the Monokuma file, what kind of blunt instrument? I bet it was an iron pipe. An iron pipe, you dumbass. I swear. Hero is like, he's something special, man. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood, and there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. It seems too obvious, but whatever. It's okay. We gotta start with the obvious things. The wound things. on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yes! <laughs> Someone's That's gotta so do it. Pretty. If you don't mind. I will proceed from here. Okay. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Oh, come on. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. Oh, that's sus. What? Pointing For fingers real? early on. Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Oh, Jack. he still believes that. Jesus Christ. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added to the non-stop debates. A new element? What do you mean? Lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. Your truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines. So think of them as obstacles. There's a way to keep this white noise from getting in your way. Press the A button to attach the silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer instead of the white noise, the time limit will decrease, so take careful aim. Oh my god. If your action difficulty is set to gentle, white noise won't appear at all. In which case, you can forget about the silencer and just focus on the situation in front of you. Well then, good luck, oh god. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on! There's just no proof for it! No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. Ah, uh, no. It's actually blood lust. Ugh, bruh. But more important is the other characteristic, and it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Dakota?
I got it! Apparently, in every genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! Well, we knew... Okay, we knew it was gonna go this direction. Okay, wait, hold on a sec. But Toko I, I like still am so confused. or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this gotta be so complicated? It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. Uh, what it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko. The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? Hangman's Gambit. Oh god. Oh god. What are we going for here? I. Uh, okay, that means this has to be an I. There needs to be a vowel. Oh, there's an A there too. Okay, so we have an A and an I for vowels. I wish. Okay, no, you can't look. Okay. Oh my god, I'm so confused. I'm gonna fail this. Thing, Crystal. What do we. <laughs> I forgot the point in the conversation. Okay. They want me to go in order, so I can't just fill in letters randomly. Oh, there's an R. R N. Oh, there's an O. Oh, there's more vowels. I'm going through so many words in my head. It's not so this is actually pen and paper. Pen and paper would be great right now. <laughs> Do I even have time for this shit? Pen and paper! You have to do the letters in order, so that doesn't help. So we have an O, I, A. I will get this. Maybe. T. I'm gonna fail. Shit. There's also a Z? What the hell? Do I even know this word? I'm wondering if this is even a word I'm aware of. No, no, that can't be it. I want to say the last two letters are hiss. Um, but... Hiss? So I'm like, 
Apothis. Ash. C. C. I'm not good at these word games. Fuck. So there has to be. Cat bat. Say ash, ash. Could be that. Ash. Ashing. There's a. Uh, there's no G. No G. Okay, so not I N G. Z. <laughs> this is so stressful. <laughs> this is so stressful. I'm writing down so many possibilities. Uh, that. We're trying to. This is about her personality disorder thing. At rat no rat nat nat shit shins shit ashens uh uh <laughs> bat uh uh okay let's get rid of that oh. This is impossible. Ill, uh, ooh, la, 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 la. I'm convinced this is not a word that I even know. Uh, H I. What happens if it's like wrong to start with? Okay, it just. Let's see if we can get the first letter. It is an S. S. It's S? What? S. S. It has to be a vowel. Uh. Oh shit! 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 What? Oh skits! 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 Wait, is that it? Really? No. Schizo, 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 schizo. Really? Schizophrenia. No, that's, that's okay. That's fucking dumb. Is it because genocide Jack has? A that is so fucking dumb. I even said it. I even said schizophrenia, dude. Fucking hell. Okay, that that's that's a stretch. Oh. Uh... I didn't even go in that direction at all. Fucking hell. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file too. They thought that the suspect might have what did they call it? Dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. But still, go and say that about Miss Fukawa is perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. One thing that shows Toko, Taco could have a split personality. I got it. Oh. I was going to talking about how she okay. started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... I'm fine, I'm fine! Yeah. Was that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? It's a little creepy. She must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, and a top inning, and a nose bottom, and a sea of truth, and a web of lies. This is concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, 
and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No, what she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. Oh, this is the part I wanted she to know about. She told me a most interesting story. Is this their promise? She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? Wait, this is fucked up. <laughs> is he using that against her? This is all a lie. Right, Toko? Oh, <laughs> that's fucked up. Anyone. Is that where this is going? What? I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. Yikes. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. <laughs> this is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Damn, boy! No sympathy! Besides, I mean, they are in a life or death situation, I guess. Promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry, I couldn't ke keep our promise. Don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. Oh my god. That's the only reason I promise. Oh my god. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing. Could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I don't like this case anymore. <laughs> I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. Oh, man. The person? Y you don't... B -b -b -ya -ka -ya! Oh, God. What an ass. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom. But in the next second... Well, hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? Dude, her tongue is abnormally large. Yeah. Holy shit. Intense. Like they say, sound and murder. 
murderous mind, sound, and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! Okay, this is interesting. <laughs> This is the murderous fiend genocide Jack. This is, this is this is beyond insane. Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? It's definitely Biakia. Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds. Just kidding. <laughs> not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! Oh my god. And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. This is... It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> this should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Oh my god. I'm sorry. As much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit! But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth! Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Maybe. Maybe she's totally right about that. Not totally right about that, but, but something's still bothering me. What she said, I need to get some more details about all of this. Here we go! Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. You say that, but perhaps if you had an oh, an alibi. When you compare your path, the modus operandi, what more proof oh, oops. do we need? <laughs> I, I was supposed to up. stop. You kill oh my god, the laughing fest! Wait, 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 I'm gonna skip it again. You say that. Listen to the laughing fast, fast pace. Oh, an alibi. When you compare your path, the modus operandi, what more proof? <laughs> Give it up. You kill Oh my god! <laughs> You say that, but you perhaps if you had an oh, an alibi. When you compare your past with the modus operandi. Oh, oops. What more proof do we need? Oh, I was using the wrong joystick. <laughs> oops, it's my left Give one, not my right one. You killed her. Their voices pitch up when you go fast. You say that, but do you perhaps if you had an It's oh, really cool. An when you compare your past with the modus operandi. Now. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. 
methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and the... Huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! Human garbage! Holy shit! I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using Ragu or Chef Boyardee. Hey, Ragu is awesome! This is no creation of mine! I love Ragu, fuck off! Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference. I got it! For one, the cause of death is... In the Genocide Jack murders, all the vic... According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with... A but Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably <laughs> different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Would you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? <clears throat> That's right. The second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of Genocide Jack, the other victims were stabbed through their hands. I got it! Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something I'm being else so stupid. was used to suspend them. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed <clears throat> scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional. So naturally, I'm very picky about the tools I use. I'm a professional killer. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Are Big you Mac? referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac! There's actually one more difference! Big Mac? Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Only a Big Mac? Who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case! Hmm? Oh, thank you. There's a pattern <clears throat> there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims and Chihiro didn't fit it. Oh, I ignored the names. Oh, they were all men. Oh. I, I didn't realize that. They actually were all guys now that I think about it. That Chihiro didn't even strike me. In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. That's a bunch of names and ages. 14 years old, that's fucked up. They were all... guys? Yeah, I did not that's realize right. that. The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little... Oh my god. What the hell is wrong with you? I can't help it. 
I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fan girl. And the movie side <laughs> of me just hates it. <laughs> but now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged man, madam! So, since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Funny how Byakuya stopped talking. Italian chefs suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. Yeah. Quiet, lowly card! <laughs> oh my god! Her? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. <laughs> and lowly! some fluke I Kill to survive. Why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! <laughs> that does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Oh, damn. Roasted. Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high class envy of the entire world scissors. Okay. Okay, whatever. You still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? She's fully equipped. That's right, so I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Okay. Go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Does the background say dun dun dun? Not to mention ah, I have ah, no ah. to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway. Yeah, you gotta respect it. I mean, I she may be no a killer, but damn, you gotta respect anymore. the, you know. Such a heinous villain she's very really be innocent? Dedicated to her craft, yeah. But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Hold on, there is one person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Oh, look at his face. He be sweating. Oh no. Oh no. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents. I should have tried selecting a dead record. person now that you guys mention it. Plus, you'd already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of genocide jack being the killer so hard was. Because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! <gasps> I'm on fire! Oh my god. Help me, Akia! What's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began asking suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Oh my god. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. A 
and the locker rooms. They're suspicious, very suspicious indeed, wouldn't you agree? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. <laughs> I want my body to be found! You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Uh, nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. Uh. A new element? What do you mean a new element? Oh my god. Next, we're going to add something called the truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold down the X button, you'll memorize that weak spot. And memori this memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. You can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded truth bullets, it may be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When's the best time to flashback? Well, you'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? Oh god. In this case, I will say that if you don't use a flashback, you will, won't be refuting anything. Yakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. But he was acting weird... How? You feel presented with the opportunity to check out the girl's locker room. You absolutely Oh my god, look at Taco's face. That's a natural reaction for any guy! Shut up. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd take me with you. Oh my god. Doesn't make sense how he could have known before we even found it. We need to make sure that contradiction is clear. Okay. Um, so, you said Biafia was acting kind of weird before we found the body. <laughs> I like how the voice keeps going. Okay, sorry, I immediately forgot everything. But he was acting weird. If you're presented with the opportunity, that's a natural reaction. The victim was Chihiro. Oops! I was supposed to hold the button. We fucked up. Shoot! Hold the button, hold the button. So, you said Biaki, but he was acting weird. If you're presented with the opportunity, that's a natural reaction. The victim was Chihiro. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. 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 There was no time for point
So, you said Biakio. Press it. Oh. Other way around. Come on. Technically, both work, okay? But he was acting weird. If he had presented with the opportunity, he expects a natural reaction. The victim was cheap. No, it's wrong. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Yeah, that was really dumb. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. Very interesting. I'm kind of fucked. Weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. Starting to get defensive. He doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like it has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? <laughs> the differences between the case and the other Genocide Jack mur murders. The evidence that proves Viakia is responsible is hidden in there? What could it be? Kyoko, what did you do? What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? Oh my god. When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. <laughs> That's right! It absolutely was! <laughs> Taka. Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that Look at the rope. tongue! It has a spiral now! Hey, Yakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, somebody else must have had it hidden away somewhere. Okay, so we probably take the first. The item she had been bound with was like rope, but was it actually rope? That was the extension cord. What? The difference between the cases? Do you want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended there. Maybe I don't need to do this? Am I overthinking it? Hey, Bianchi, uh, I've never seen that rope before in there. I've never seen that rope before in my life. Obviously, oh, somebody okay. else must have had it. I'm just gonna do that. I'm already down to four hearts. What? That's the only thing I kind of don't like about this style of game is how they do this. Uh, it's like when you already know the answer, but you have to figure out how they want you to say it. That's right. It absolutely worked. Hey, Bianca, where'd you get it? I've never seen that rope before. No, that's wrong. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yaku, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time? went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Yakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, 
then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. Totally calm, totally unconcerned. Oh, he's breaking face, buddy. Not even involved! What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. <laughs> he kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Sure. Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering you. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girl's locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? What was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girl's locker room, but does that mean... <clears throat> I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, right? But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this <gasps> is a true Oh letdown. my god! <laughs> she was found dead in the girl's locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well... I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later. Along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Biakia. Did you just- did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who had been so confident up until now, maybe Byakuya never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Evidence that shows that the murder took place somewhere else. There was something that was switched between the boys and the girls' locker rooms. Well, both the rug and the poster. Which one do you want me to say? Uh, I'll go for the posters. I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was... A picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't big you booba. think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room. <laughs> Thank had you, that added to the conversation a, a lot. Poster of the super popular <laughs> boy band Tornado. Again. That doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. Finally back. It's so too late to say that maybe the posters were switched. <laughs> Thank and you for the uh, three I months. I appreciate it, Witchy. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. I just realized it's probably better for me to go down here. Ah. Uh. Oh. 
I'm ashamed I wasted any amount of time listening to you. Wait, so I, I totally missed the question then. Uh, it was moved. It. Just it was moved? Can I look at the log? Okay, no. Okay, just the other carpet. The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpet was switched to? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible. Don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but... Why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? Oh! Because it was missing. Locker rooms, you have to swipe your e handbook across the card reader device, but Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. A uh, hero? I had to. Shut up! I'm telling you, oh. I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Chihiro really have gone into the boys' locker room somehow? Here we go. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I've got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She hacked it. Hacker man. She was the ultimate program, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. If she had that, she could get into the boys' locker room no problem. Theoretically, if Chihiro was able to use Leon's handbook, she could get into the boys' locker room, but when we found Leon's handbook in the main hall, there's no doubt that it was broken. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have that? She must have hacked her e-handbook. She hacked she it. The program, I'm sure that would have been. Uh, I don't think that she used the thing that was in the main. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon. No, it's wrong. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you get... Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked us, like I said. Taka! She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst. You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts glaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's Actually. handbook... She didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. 
so I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room and Byakuya's the one who did it. Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Kyoko, coming in with I the save. You, I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. What? Wait, 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 wait. Just... Don't worry. This'll make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Is it uh, both ways? I, have I no wonder doubt if it's that. Your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Like, what if somebody was already in the pool because, like, the, like you have to go through the locker rooms to to get to the pool, right? But those doors don't have the the card going in. So, like, going in, maybe coming out is my thought. The girls' locker room. We've already searched this place top to bottom. What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. Kyoko, you want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully. Oh like my god. Someone escort Hifumi out of this room. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait, no, wait! It's probably best <laughs> if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just based on religious grounds. Based you know? on religious grounds, yeah. Very well. I'll do it. A soccer girl. You're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys. Oh my do god. It. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. Yeah. So just leave this to me. Sakura, what is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I Taco? go. Taco? I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Oh, Sakura. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... It... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Sakura's eyes went from staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy. Oh. Ah, I see. So she was actually. That a was thief. unexpected. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. Oh. What? Okay. <laughs> You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Oh. Then, then it's really true. Oh. Guy? Oh. Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. <laughs> Monaco, please. He was totally a guy. Oh. Then he was a crossdresser. Oh, no, I'm really on fire. I wish I had killed him. Okay, now that's fucked so up. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, 
That certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Okay, so that would answer a lot of questions. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought it had never even crossed my mind. Because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender Obi as male, be sweating. yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. Aw, that's why Chihiro didn't want to work out at the same time as Aoi and Sakura. To get into the girls' locker room. Oh. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now Bro, that's everything fucked up. has been connected. All the mysteries Chris, Kyle, have Anna finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear, oh, what whatever. whatever. We still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> yeah, Byakuya, by the way. Thank you for the thousand bits, what the heck? Thank you so much! <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting. He keeps indeed. saying that, but it's a defense ah, mechanism. He knows he's, he's fucked. He's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? Uh, I still think it's possible he well, was framed. Without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. Yeah. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. It's still possible. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. See, it's this exact thing that has been in my brain since the start of the case. Like, how much of reverse psychology is Byakuya making me go through? Because, like, yeah, it's really obvious that he's the only one that spends time in the library, the extension cord, like, it leads to him. But, like, on the other hand, someone could also use that against him to make it look like he did it. And I had these thoughts from the very beginning. So I'm like, but there's also the thought of, like, okay, well, he could be playing, like, a... A reverse, reverse, reverse psychology game. Like, oh, I'll make it seem like uh, it's it, it's so simple to point to me. Like, it could go a whole nother level, you know? This is where my uh, confusion lied the whole time. It's like, okay, it's simple that it points to him, but at the same time, he could reverse psychology be like, yeah, it was actually that simple, but ha ha ha. Uh, it's weird. Still on Celeste, though. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. 
And then again when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. <laughs> Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? <laughs> now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. You're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. True. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? <laughs> of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? <laughs> what am I, an ant? Let's discuss this all as a group one more time. I would think so I sometimes, time Hero, not gonna lie. <laughs> That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? There's one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene. The killer is Genocide Jack. The implications are kind of weird here. Since the crime scene was the boy's locker room, you would need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to be a guy. But that's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something. <laughs> what the fuck? Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. <laughs> you want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. And it's not like they're just gonna turn themselves in. Game over, man. Game over. Yeah! No! Not game over! No, as a matter of fact, there is an eyewitness account regarding Chihiro. She has more information about that. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to it? Please, I think nobody get a look. I'm sure if someone saw the gift back, someone saw the victim at some point. Mm -hmm. yeah. All we need right now is any time to move Oh. Out. Apparently that's not it? Shoot! Oh. 
Oh, okay. That's news to me. Why wouldn't that work? Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be why. All we need right It's over. It's all over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. And only the killer. <laughs> like they're just gonna turn themselves in. Game over, man. Game over. Yeah, no, not game over. All right, hero. If nobody get a look, I'm sure if someone saw the killer, perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. All we need is over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. No, it's wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knew about this. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! My brain. It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. I better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. As this is progressing, I'm getting more and more confused. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, you can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. I should, yeah, huh? but I'm still doesn't mean I'm not no, confused. <laughs> Seriously? Who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe. But we can make certain inferences, if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say. But fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was...
just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shahiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket you took. Does Shihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? I mean, I guess so. <laughs> Somehow it's really hard to believe. Yeah, I... Ugh, I'm perplexed. I just don't know where they're going with it. First of all, we know where Shihiro was heading. He was on his way to go exercise. <laughs> so next we have to ask... Why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black! Hi. I don't even have a tracksuit. Because <laughs> exercising sucks. Yeah, we know. I have a white tracksuit, personally. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out who the culprit is? No way. Not a chance. He was just happy to be there. She's right, what he said. How did he know something like that? Pick that tracksuit to match the one on the culprit was wearing. My brain's doing the thing where it's trying to think five steps ahead instead of like thinking in the now situation. I'm like trying to think like what the result of this is. So it's causing me to not think about what the answer to this would be. The same blue tracksuit as him. My tracksuit is black. I don't even have a tracksuit because exercising sucks. I have a white, I got it from the warehouse. It... First of all, we know where Chikiro was heading. I don't think I'm supposed he to be on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the What do you mean the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing. So, what's your The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? My tracksuit is black. I, I don't even have a tracksuit. I'm sorry, I love that so much. exercising sucks. <laughs> I don't even have I one. I have a white I tracksuit. Exercising. I got it from the warehouse, if you must know. Did any of that really help us get any closer to figuring out? No way. Not a chance. You heard him, right? 
Mondo? First of all, we know he was on his way to so next we have to lie. I think I have to do the what do you memory mean? thingy. It, it matched the one the cover. So what the killer was wearing the same blue tracks and This isn't gonna be it. Oh, what? No, I was taking a shot in the dark. I was did not think that was it. Hold on a second, Mondo. Oh, what it's because he say? said it. He shouldn't have known it was blue because the information was not given. Oh. 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 Oh, okay. Okay. Ah, oh, the light bulb. What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... She didn't say blue. God damn it. That completely went over my head. That completely blew over my head. She never said anything about the jet I'll stop. color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you? You just... Hey, put up the less. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was blue. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Because I... I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was... ...is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? What? Are Cherry. you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? The tongue swirl. I just happened to God, see it. God, that's night. disgusting. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony, she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the bag. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. I failed to see the point in moving it then on Byakuya's part. I think I'm missing something there. I don't understand why. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. Oh. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That answers my That's question. Right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. Man, Kyoko's way better than me, man. I didn't suspect yeah. him at all. What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. <laughs> because I hate him! <laughs> How many hearts do I have left? I don't care, I want to see what's said, what, what is said here. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer oh, to Oh, wait, that's it? Differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happen to refer to him as dude. <laughs> Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Notice such a uh... Are you a witch? She's a witch. No, I'm not. It wasn't correct, one. but she ignored it. Not oh, whatever. Not as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. 
Mm-hmm. Uh. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I... 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 Uh, I didn't kill anyone! Oh, now we have You've to go through this. Over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation. It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. Shut up. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Can he die already? Oh, yeah. That reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If, if you really insist, then... Um... Here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground that it must belong to... It's mine! It's Chihiro's. It. Chihiro lost it. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. But it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken, as is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure. Oh rate. no, still low battery. What are we gonna do? Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? How did the handbook break? There's only one possible explanation. By hitting its weak point. Wait, that actually I was actually gonna make fun of that answer. But Monokuma did say before that it had one. I got it! You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah! You remember that? I did, yeah. Uh, sure, maybe I let that slip, but I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. Monokuma crushed it with his fat dumpy? But if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! I'm pretending I didn't Why read that. Why would we that? want to break our own handbooks? A weakness for pushy demands but you're sure you won't follow their example then allow me to make a special announcement the weak point of my cutting edge e handbook is turning it off when it's exposed to high temperatures oh. for too long it will suffer a meltdown and totally break i flipping knew it you knew it 
Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor oh, of the Mondo. The Mondo and the Taka having bro moments. Degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. <laughs> That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Oh, Taka, this is going to be tough news for Taka, man. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find Taka's out? bro, man. Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Taka's gonna be so hurt. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? What do you mean by accident? Because Mondo. What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke. Yeah, because Mondo wore his clothes inside. Is an accident. They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. It was mine. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> it had to be the one who wore all their clothes into the sun. <laughs> it was Leon. <laughs> Are you sure you thought this through? <laughs> oh. I knew it, it was Leon. Fuck. Taka, man. Taka, he's gonna fucking cry, dude! He's gonna fucking cry! He knows where it's going! Here's my answer. Taka, no, Mondo, it's bro. your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? He's gonna fucking cry. He's gonna cry. He's gonna cry. What? Why? Why do you keep accusing Taka? him? Taka! Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize, he'd also left his handbook in Quit one the of the game now so Taka pockets. can't get hurt. Oh. <laughs> This and poor child, over, he just got a Mondo bro, man. Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on. You've got it all wrong. He would never kill. Talk. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I don't want to believe it either. I found something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. Poor Taka. He's so stunned. So we got broken e-handbook, Chihiro's e-handbook, and the card reader. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Oh, does it? See? Look! Taka! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! 
tudo. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo. I guess you I, I don't know why. Handle. I think it could be both answers, but we'll try this. Because we actually Mondo's have it. Is actually open. And that proves that what well, my goddamn hand. Yeah. Oh god, where's my yeah. cursor? No, it's wrong. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? Talk. What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's. Which would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's. Yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Uh... Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, <laughs> they're not a student. <laughs> it's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries, if anything, it just makes things more interesting. Okay. I decree if they're that dead, they're not a student. The they're just dead. Is not the violation of the rules. They don't exist. Well, they're nobody. Mondo, if I'm wrong about Bruh. this, you're welcome to say okay. so. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to admit I made a mistake. But okay. Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? C come on, tell him he's wrong. Okay, you gotta stop calling him, bro. You are wrong. You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Oh no... Okay, then why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning? That way, everything will become clear, and we'll all see if I was right or wrong. If you're dead, you are you aren't a person. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, here we go. I'm gonna fuck this up hard. Alright, how bad are we gonna fuck this up? Okay, um, okay, okay, okay. Celeste in the warehouse, she goes to get her track jacket, track suit. She was seemingly gonna change, but Celeste was watching. Uh, and then she hurriedly put this in her bag. And then whoosh, 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 whoosh. Bye! Um... I'm trying to look at- oh my god. Uh, broken handbook, shadow, in. okay. Trying to look at all my circles here. Oh, there's more this way too. Oh Jesus, there's a lot. Oh god, there's a lot of fake ones maybe. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, maybe that's not it. Let me look at all the options. Wait, maybe that is right. I mean, okay, I'll keep that. Next. Uh, okay. Pium! We go to the door. We go to... Let me see options here. This has nothing to do with the killer yet. This is just... Chihiro going on in. I Would it be this one?
go up to the door, go in. You have the duffel bag. Uh, Chihiro goes in. Person there. Panic. Leave. There are way too many of these. So seemingly, Mondo. Where, what would this be? Oh wait, there's also that other picture too. I, I think that's it though. I think this is it, because we want to go in the door, and then that's whenever, uh, this, okay, sees, oopsie poopsie, we made an oopsie doopsie, where, go, no, that wouldn't be right. I'm so confused about, like, the whole switching thing. Maybe I'll uh we'll come back to this. We'll come back to this. Uh dumbbell. Owie. And then blood. I think just the picture here. <clears throat> We're getting there. Oh, I'm a little bit confused. A little bit confused. Okay. So, smack, blood gets everywhere, blood splatters on the poster, and then it drips on the wall, uh, on the floor carpet. Dumbbell drops. Terrified. Chihiro be dead. Uh, carpet. Wow, they actually did move the whole machines. That's a lot, dude. Switch the carpet. And also, wait, so they rip, uh, rolled up the carpet. But how would they get in? I'm a little bit confused about that. How does this end up in the girl's end? to understand. Um, but anyway, I'll just keep going with this. So this is Act 3, where we try to switch the scenes. Naked gray dude is swole, I guess. Of course he is. Oh, there is that picture. I wonder if I should be using that. Maybe that's where he picks it up. And then he goes after her with it. That would make sense. Okay, I'm um, okay. This is and then this is all after. Okay. Roll up the carpet and also the poster. Uh take body. Oh, that's that? Wait, should I not be using? Okay, I'll come back to that later. I think my previous ones are wrong then, based on this. So this would have to be... Byakuya at this point. He switched it. Why am I so confused by this scenario? And why... Hehe. 
Yeah, I do got 14, 13 minutes. The time's going by very fast. I'm gonna do what I did last time and work backwards. That really helped a lot last time. Oh. So this is after it was written, so it can't be that, or that, or that, or that, or that. And that's... the pool? Oh, wait, this last act is actually kind of confusing me. But yeah, it had to be left on the ground at some point because somebody else picked it up in the hall and that would be, uh, Hifumi. I don't think that's right, but it's just a like, process of elimination. That's kind of all it can be. Uh, okay, so then somebody had to go and do this. Uh, pick up. Okay, maybe this happened. Oh, they actually show Byakuya. Okay, Byakuya comes in. Maybe I go a little bit further back here. No, okay, that goes into that scenario. Chihiro B on the ground. Byakuya rolls up and is like, wow, look at that fucking evil ass face. And then he writes the lettering. Should be here. Why is this relevant on the ground? I guess it would have to be moved too, technically. So then, yeah, put up the scene of the crime. I think that has to be right. Okay, yeah, that's that seems accurate. Okay, so if we go back here, <clears throat> so this is Mondo. only leaves the switch here. What is the difference between these two pictures? He, this is like, they're both the picture of him taking it down. What is the difference? They both look the same. Like they, uh, that, oh, that one, it looks like he's putting it up. And this one, it looks like he's putting it down. So if these, okay, maybe that's the difference. So, rolls it up, takes down the picture, takes body. Switches over in door, drop body, puff and puffin. This is where they're okay and then Byakuya rolls in makes it look like genocide jack did it what is the purpose i still don't understand Byakuya. <laughs> what is your purpose here i think this is more or less there could be a few wrong i think there could be a few things wrong here but i think i think i maybe got like 90 percent of it right This one, I'm wondering... I feel like this one could also be the... I can see this one being uh, this picture as well. It could be either one. Like the... Wait, no, it can't be. No, it has to be. No. Because, yeah, that picture would have been on in that room beforehand. Okay, I, 
Well, you know what? The I think it's like 90% right. You. Let's just see what happens. First, let's take a look back to the forces. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Okay, yeah. Boom, 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 ba -doom, boom, boom, ba -doom, boom, 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 No! That means my one down here just needs to be switched up, I think. So if I switch that... No, oh, I know what you hear. We deserve better. Hmm. How would that make sense? Now, I still think this one's right. But if I switch this, then it doesn't make sense with the other one. It's so hard to see the details. The back, the bag. Uh, I'm just confused on where I switch. So that's a gray hand. That so can't be beforehand. So let's just. Okay, yeah, what would what, what I... <laughs> That's the same picture, so definitely not that one. So after he picked her up, how does this make sense? Like, I didn't get my time back. Like, it's 20 minutes total. Like, even if you fuck up. I thought it would, like, be rejuvenated. But, no. Yeah, none of this makes sense to me. That means there's more than one thing wrong here. Yeah, I can't put this picture here because it's just repeated here. This is my issue. That's after he picks up. That's after he picks her up, which is strange. But I'm gonna do it anyway. I know that's wrong, but Here's whatever. Exactly what happened. With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though Wait, it was I? officially nighttime. I knew it wasn't right either, but I don't know what else to put there. You didn't like my answer here, where I really thought that that made sense. Maybe... 
it's actually this. But I still think this is right. It just seems weird because, like, it's just a repeat of earlier. Here's exactly what happened. It's not exactly what happened, though. I'm confused. I don't know what they want me she to say made here. Her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Ah, my heart! Ah! So we're answering the question of how that happened. But none of these pictures do that, or at least I seemingly don't think so. Oh! My god, is it that? She picked up the the broke of the the ground oh that possibly but no 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 i'll worry about it later <laughs> i do the thing is that is my number one issue with games like these i always overthink always um I am queen of overthinking everything. But then what would the last picture be? Just the leaving? No, the thing is, I think this is right now. I did have it right. I'm pretty sure that goes there. You know what, I'm gonna, can I, oh, I can't leave it blank. Fucking hell. The killer is you! The killer is you! We still got it wrong! She made her way <laughs> At this point, we're gonna go through every fucking bubble for this! Oh, ooh, oh, I can do that? That's not gonna help me here anyway. Where's this one being? So, uh... Oh god, these are all wrong, too. Oh my god, we're fucked! Let's take down the ones... Okay, um... Hold on, we're gonna go back. Wee -wee 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 -wee. I had the right idea, I think. Low battery, again. Two minutes. Ah! Everybody panic! We're fine. Everything's fine. Nobody panic. We're gonna be okay. had to be after. This could be, um, oh wait, what was my thought? Shit, I had a thought. And I immediately lost it. Oh, that, that, yes. overheat. Oh no! Oh wait! I didn't even see the clock! It's less than a minute! Wait, the in on this, is it exactly the same? Or no, the cuff is different. Uh, it's, it's different, it's different. Okay, so this one has the cuff, uh, which means it's Chihiro. Okay, 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 okay. So, um... Oh my god. But this is what I had before! <laughs> but we have to explain how she got in. Um, she tried to... Do that. That doesn't- that's not it either! Everybody panic! We're gonna fail! 
Now I don't even know where my missing. Oh god, I did this. I fucked up. Oh god. We um eight um. Uh, okay, okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Here's exactly what happened. Big F. God damn it. That's a gray hand, With so it's definitely hand, not the answer. Headed out. I even said that before. Uh, it's Mondo's hand. It's not Chihiro's hand. So it had to be later. No! Time's up. God damn it. I can't let Mondo win. Wait, why would I get the most votes? Oh my god, these people. Kyoka would never let that happen. Oh, I have two minutes to decide if I want to give it another shot. Oh. I refuse to give up yet. Oh look, my hearts came back. How cool. I feel like I had the rest of it right though. <gasps> wait, I have to start from scratch? Oh wait, that's probably better. Wait, though, okay, that's probably way better. Start with a fresh brain. She books it. Books it to the lockers. But in the explanation, they want to explain how he acquired it. But no, that's not right. And that's Mondo's hand. Mondo... Biakia. Mondo... Chihiro. Did we try that? With just that? Oh. I overthought it. Because of course I did. Okay, um... I think I had the rest of it right. Goes in, uh... the rest of it right. I don't want to question myself now. He picks it up. Wacky, wavel, wavy, inflatable human. Gets knocked on the ground. Poster. Gets a rip. Oh god, chat, what the fuck did you do? You guys got fucking deleted. Oh, were you guys gonna ask? Oh, did you guys answer my rhetorical question? Don't answer my rhetorical questions. I'm talking to myself, by the way. <laughs> That's why you guys got fucked. Bianca, I wish to understand the purpose of this. I, I still... I think about this and I'm just very confused. here going into there I guess I still don't quite understand this is the same picture but um, this and then this just kind of doesn't make sense to me whoa uh, Mikvil, Mikvili, thank you so much for the prime gaming sub I appreciate it thank you so much Maybe it would be this. He would have to move both of the things into the other room, so I don't know. I can see it being both answers, but...
for this sake, I guess we'll just go with the poster. Let's just try this. Oh god. Here is you. I'm so mad. First, let's take a look back. All right, let's skip this. I like that Celeste just pokes the bag. Hi. Oh my god, look at that. I just had that picture at the wrong Simple. one. Because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Oh my god. Once inside, he met with someone there. And the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Jakiro, That's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. Yikes. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Yeah. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, mm -hmm. pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. Yeah, that was kind of like a redundant picture, but that's okay. Uh, okay, and then probably it goes over. The killer is you! Finally carrying the corpse into the girls' locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And they're dead. Oh, okay. They're dead, so you can use dead people's e-handbooks to get wherever you want. Which is a little bit fucked up. Uh, no, I don't think that's it. But yeah, you gotta, like, put down the body. What are my other pictures? Could be the one that I used, uh, ahead. Because, yeah, it goes in, but the rest of these make sense. Yakia, why? <laughs> why, you bitch? Yeah, I'm not quite understanding what they want me to do here, but, it, like, he's literally carrying Chihiro. So, what do they want me to show here? It can't be that. I, it wouldn't be this either, but I'm gonna try it anyway. You. Got nothing to lose. I would be really confused if it was that. That'd be weird. But yeah, options are a little bit limited, so... What would this be then? Because yeah, that would have to be all Byakia stuff. It can't be this one. Oh, 
Oh, as in like, oh. Wait, are they saying like he approached them? What the heck would this be? think this is it either exactly but I'm kind happened. of running out of options here. Sayaka and Juka's handbooks have been placed in the main Using hall. Those, a boy could get into the girls locker room without much problem. But do I need to explain like where he got it from? There's no really there's no really picture for that. Why am I so confused? We're almost there! That has to be right. That has to be right. Guess maybe. That's act four. Okay, so we don't need to do that part. The coming of Biakia. This doesn't make any sense! I'm running out of bubbles though, but this straight up doesn't make any sense. I'll just show the hand again. That doesn't make any sense! It's not that one. I'm gonna do it anyway. Here's exactly what happened. This is totally what happened. They're showing it again. What the fuck? God, that, why am I so bad at the video game? Literally all of these were used. Here's exactly what happened. This would not make any sense. Literally, what bubbles do I have left? What the fuck? Yeah, that's the only bubble that I'm like... really perplexed by. That one has to be that. This also has to be this. This has to be this. So our... Okay, what what question... What, what, what are we questioning here? We tried that. Am I missing a bubble?! We tried that. Also, I don't understand what door this even is. I guess I don't really need to know that. The <laughs> low battery. Low battery has been low for like fucking two hours at this point. So the whole beginning is right. At this point, I'm just gonna try every one. We did try this, though. It, it doesn't make sense! I'm pretty sure we just tried this, Here's but exactly I, I forget happened. at this point what I've tried and what I haven't tried. We're supposed to be explaining how- oh, I ran out of hearts, right. I don't understand the, the explanation needed. I refuse to give up yet. Okay. Well, restarting will probably help anyway. I like that I just regained my hearts. That's fantastic. Oh, are they mixed up? Oh, they're mixed up now. Where's Muscle Man? Macho, Macho Man. Rolls up the carpet.
takes down the poster. Goes to the girls' room. Picks up the key and gets in the door. Question mark. Yakuya in Act 4 comes in with his electrical core. Hangs him up like Genocide Jeff. Throws this thing onto the ground. I've done all of these bubbles that are left. What? Done all of these. This, I think I can throw this one away because we know it, that we're not going to use it. Is there one that I haven't tried? Am I going crazy? This doesn't make sense because if you're literally carrying a body, how would you put up a poster first and then it doesn't make sense? I don't know what this game wants from me! All I know is that Byakuya is insane! All I know is Byakuya is crazy. That's all I need to know. He's just fucking crazy, dude. No, it's not exactly what happened. <laughs> I'm so confused by this bubble. <laughs> I'm molding. Bloodstains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally, carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. So yeah, that's what you're trying to prove. Oh my fucking god. And that's I exactly thought I did that how well. the killer did. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. Bro. They change the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. Whoa, epic! That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. Why? 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 So, after stumbling on the crime scene... Why would you... Why? He 
went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood. It's like this man is testing me. That's why he did it. His only good reason is just to test my knowledge. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. Okay, yeah, so I need the other picture. Here's exactly what happened. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sun. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence, Chihiro's handbook. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Oh, Mondo. Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Oh. Now I'm looking forward to the Taka reaction. No. This can't be right. Taka, no. Yeah. Where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him. Bro, all you did was go on a sauna date with him. That was one date. Evidence that Mondo is the killer. That already revealed itself earlier in the trial. If I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now, once I do that, everything will become clear. A new element? What do you mean? Fever time? What? During a bullet time, uh, if you press the R button, R fever time will activate and the tempo will be forced to its max. At this point, even if you push the buttons at random, you won't miss. You can push a, uh, a button however you want to destroy the opponent's verbal assault. But this only lasts until your focus gauge runs out, so make the best possible use of your time. Of course, it won't, wouldn't be fair if you, only you got access to a special time, right? So we've also prepared something called ne Nega? Nega time. That your opponent can use. If your opponent activates Nega time during the bullet time battle, your tempo marker will disappear, making it quite a bit tougher to hit the buttons in rhythm. If you were to activate a fever time at this point, no, never mind, I'm sure nothing would happen. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, if your action difficulty is set to gentle, whatever. Uh, yeah, I'll try to have fun. Yeah, whatever. This is gonna go great. Show me some evidence. You're wrong. I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! I won't listen! I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence. I won't listen. You're corrupt. Sorry, Taco. Show me some evidence. This should prove it. If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we don't gotta do that. Huh? What? Yeah. Yeah. I did it. Oh. <gasps> I killed him. Oh. Oh. He fessed up. Oh. Oh, Mo. 
on, though. 80 points for Gotcha! Yes! Bro? Bro? bro. What are you saying? Don't call him bro. I got Don't no do choice, it. no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... Give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Oh god, he's Ask the biker the gang guy? He's gonna get action. run over by a bunch Watch of bikes. That. That's how he's gonna die. Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the Blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice? Or the dreadfully wrong one. What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh no. Paka's gonna fucking cry. Do we get a cutscene for every murder? What? This time it looks like you got it right again! Yes, it is so! The black and that killed Chihiro Fujisaki was... Mondo Awada! Unbelievable. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous! Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer! You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru! You need to be more careful! What? I refuse to believe it. There's no way, no way he would kill someone. Sorry. Sorry, bro. What, what is this? Why are you apologizing? Why, 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 why? Why? Oh, why did you do it? Now then. It looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually... The story of the murder this time is the sad story of two men. Ha! Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the B button to fast forward the ta- Okay, what? Okay. There once was a young boy. I was a young... And his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. Presses the B button. Okay, what? Gotta hear it out. You're so weak even though you're a boy. He'd heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. Oh. It died. Good time for that. It <laughs> took long enough. Uh... Okay. Anyway, we're good now. He had chosen that as his way out. Um, now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he... Oh, no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside of him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. I don't like this. Weak, 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 weak. Once again, the killing- once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which, of course, included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. But if that was revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack. The armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust, in being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. What? That's pretty fucked up, Monokuma. And yet... Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, but, but... 
I also don't want to leave things the way that they are now, so maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone- Oh, Baby. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. Oh, That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm gonna accept who I am. Strong enough to- so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay, I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind- With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his body- Retrain his bi mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, um... Aww, the appropriate timing. Yo, to Stitch, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoy the emotes. When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help finish for him, help him from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. How could you do that? Yeah. <laughs> it sure was! <laughs> the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will help give me some courage. So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. That was his aspiration, and he thought that only with Mondo support would he ever be able to come close to that. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro. What did he- what did what he did? You mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room into the girls? Indeed. That's exactly what I mean. Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been a part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men. Oh. But... How does moving the body keep his secret? Because... If everyone knew that he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have be immediately begun to suspect his identity, so... He tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and sealing his handbook, see? And then Mondo did all of that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed? <laughs> Why would he do that? <laughs> the more I- the, the, the more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand! I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So why- why did you- no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone. You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory, that secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. Ooh, ho, ho. <laughs> That's probably a story and a half. Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Mondo's older brother name was Daiwata. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daiya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything he did. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. 
Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang, and before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biker biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy, but when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his, old, his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw on Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just long for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. Yeah. Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang, which is why... I... I just... Gotta get stronger, stronger than Daya. Once, just one time, no matter what, I gotta don't win. Fuck with me. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his amazing brother's retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during the race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep the game together. Because it's the team you and me put together. It's a promise between men. He decided that to try the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang in order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. As a result... The team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who'd bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself kill killed. That became the explanation of what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to leave the team so bad he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... <clears throat> strong, 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 strong! And yet... As soon as our killing game began, he realized no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. <laughs> Monokuma's like ultimate stalker. No matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create, it would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I've been carrying around, it all would have been for nothing. But that's why. I... Mondo. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I didn't know what to do Love about it. I wasn't Have sure fun. what to think or say, but after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness... Um, thank you so much, Alatudo, for the three months. I appreciate it. I am having fun. Thank you. Turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety weighed down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, he told me a secret. Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. But why? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? You've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you but would... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife to in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong, it can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us... You piece of... 
So what? You're saying I should just say what? it? You're saying if I really what? am, I should just able be able to tell everyone my secret? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness to try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making fun of me? I'm strong. Are you fucking with me right now? No! I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. Felt like I could hear something starting to creak, something inside my head. What did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? Was I supposed to just sit back and let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? What's wrong? <sighs> Damn you! Why did you have to tell me all of that? Are you trying to rub my failure in my I, face? I just wanted to... Oh, this just keeps getting sadder. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. I am strong. Strong, I'm strong. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. And stronger than Daya. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was lying at my feet covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand and I was just staring at him down on the ground. Taco. I... I killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness li like that li uh, a, li a weakness like that lived in a heart like his and it turned him cold-blooded. God damn it. <laughs> Look at him! You see, you're all just like him! For a secret from the past, for a memory? <laughs> for that, he killed another living human in cold blood! <sighs> he couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. Do you see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. You bastard! Shut up, you son of a bitch! Go ahead, say that again, I dare you! Yep. I'll say it as many times as I want, is what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now because the time for punishing is fast approaching! It can't be. Execution. Well now, well now, well now, well now. That's what I promised you, right? The blacken that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Hold now on. then, I prepared a very special punishment. For Mr. Mondo Awada, the ultimate biker gang leader. Wait, let's give it everything we've got. It's punishment time. Taco. Sorry, ma'am. Yeah, punishment time. I couldn't keep the promise we made from one man to another. Oh, blue boy flame mage. Thank you for the eight months. I appreciate it. How is he gonna die? Oh. Oh God, he's gonna get run over by a bunch of bikes. Oh my god. What? Oh god. The cage of death. Does he just spin until he's dead? Oh. Oh, oh my god! Oh, bro, that's, 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 that, oh. Oh.
I can't believe it's not butter. <laughs> ah, somebody died. I shouldn't be laughing. Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. Oh. <laughs> it can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. Taka. As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again, but he, of course, he had to. What a disappointment. This is the end of the game. Byakuya? What is this? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead, do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do, because the game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that... However... I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? Thank you! That's the question I ask myself. What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. <laughs> His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death, and it chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule too. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> Bruh. The night grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. I spotted Mondo coming out of the girl's locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. What? What? You mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well... You're saying that you knew who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been at the end, how boring would that have been? Oh my god. But, uh, okay. What a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all of that to liven things up? I see. After hearing about Genocide Jack from Taco, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene? What? But damn, man, if we hadn't figured out who'd really done it, you would have been dead too, right? Obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. Of course. Byakia turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did. And I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Once I do decide to become blackened, I know now I now know who I'll have to watch out for. Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? I'm up next! You... You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> All of this punishment, all of this despair is my gift to mankind itself! What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I'm not over-exaggerating! These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair! Yeah. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Yeah. Mean? What the heck? Mean, 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 yeah. mean? Good grief! I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing! Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm gonna stand alone as the victor, and then everyone will be revealed to- everything will be revealed to me. How exciting! A noble son of a noble family! Truly you understand me! 
<laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to a level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved com complete victory, you're up next. I'm gonna find you and kill you, understand? In the name of my family. For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! So cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something! No trash mom for you! I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap! <laughs> Byakuya? You're kind of fucked up! Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom and the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. But I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was Remember, the kind of despair Yaki that felt like a blind puppy in hell in, in hell had in hell had more of a future than us. Dang. Thank you for the hundred bits. Of all cur of all of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying. This is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask as you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, oh. fire away! Oh god, shut up. Who is it? The 16th high school student, I mean. Ooh, ooh. My, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied! Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. Thank you for the 300 bits, Oath Keeper. I appreciate it. <laughs> It's Kyoko. Ah, uh, dang. All right, chapter two. The end! And now we're down to 10. Oh, I got his jacket? I don't know about that. Oh boy. Sniff, sniff. Oh. I know I shouldn't cry. Aww. But I've had enough. Oh no. I can't take it anymore. <gasps> no. Getting out of here anytime soon. It's. Impossible. No, no, don't think about I can't it. Let myself think about how much I want to get out of here. If I keep thinking like that, I might decide to. No, he no. Donuts. I need to eat some donuts. That'll cheer me up. 
Glazed donuts, twisty donuts, jelly donuts, cream filled donut holds, malasai. Okay. Uh, I forget how to say that. A, oh god of donuts. I'm praying for a wonderful encounter. <laughs> Sorry. Please forgive me for breaking the nighttime rule. But right now, for me, donuts are absolutely necessary. What's that sound? Hmm. Sounds like it's coming from the bathhouse? But... I'm super scared, but... Is someone there? <gasps> okay... What the shit? Oh no. Oh, I don't like the look of this chapter. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> no. The morning after the conclusion of the second class trial. Oh god. Everyone met up in the dining hall just like always. And I expected it to start like any other day. That's what I expected, but... <sighs> Today's count kind of sucks, huh? Taco and Biakia still refuse to show up. Um, and I haven't seen Miss Asahina anywhere. Hmm. She said her stomach was hurting, so she'd taken it, she's taking it easy in her room for today. Oh, that is rather unusual for her. Normally, she is so full of energy. Hmm. Which is exactly why what makes me worry. <laughs> so it's uh, just the seven of us then. Uh, Mint, thank you for the prime meeting, so I appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the emotes. It looks that way. How about that? It's time to it's times like this where the committee chairman needs to get things going with a bang. Taco. Impossible. Or not. Taco! Taco hasn't said a word since everything that happened yesterday. One look at his face showed that he hadn't slept a wink last night. It must be because of Mondo. The two of them became so close, and then he finds out Mondo killed Chihiro, and then having to watch Mondo get punished and nothing he could do about that... He, I can't even imagine what it must have done to him. Well, I mean, I mean, what's gonna happen now? We haven't found any way out, and we have no idea if help's ever gonna come. <laughs> no, it's like... I'm all depressed just thinking about it. <laughs> We simply have to make the best of things, do our best to get along, and live here together in peace. Forget about the outside world and accept this new life. That is the only hope we have now. What? To live here forever? Well... Here we have every convenience. We have food, clothes, our every need it need is seen to. Why are you dissatisfied? <sighs> in fact, let me ask you this. What is it about the outside world that you long for? Is that okay? Competition, discrimination, victimization, and violence? As society grows, so does its perversion. In which case, it is our current in a, is our current situation not? <laughs> Demon angel, pretty pudgy princess. Huh? Hmm? Here we go. Maggie, the drill shop owner, the bunny-eared Amazon, cat girl, dog boy, robo robo justice, the galactic king. And, and what I mean is there's no 2D here! There is nothing to be done. The mastermind puts such base desire to their advantage, bending you to their will. You know? Well, anyway, since Taka's like catatonic, hmm. as the oldest one here, I'm officially stepping up to take the lead. So we're all gonna work together and spend the rest of the day searching the school. Searching? I'm right. Since the right? class trial is over and all, perhaps there should be new places for us to investigate. Hmm. Yeah, that's the ticket. Maybe we'll find some kind of clue this time. Well, then. then once we're done eating, let's split up and begin looking around. Do you have any problem with that, Celeste? <laughs> hmm. There may well be discovery waiting for us, which may further enrich our life here. Um... No, uh, no. The point is to look for clues. And just as we were starting to come together, she barged in and ruined the conversation. You called for me, and so I appear. Genocide! What? Nobody called 
for you. Uh, um... What the? How come it's Genocide Jill and not Taco? Yes! God, this place is just amazing! Finally, a place I can just be a my murderous self! Which is why I've decided to stop holding back and spread my wings! No more hiding in a cave for me! <gasps> Plus, I have another battle to fight! The whole killer with a split personality thing is so overdone! I gotta destroy that stereotype! You SOB! I'll fight all day and all night to murder those totally slanderous cliches! Uh, um... You are a killer with a split personality. <laughs> If she weren't here, my chances of survival would go at, up at least 10. Uh -huh. Come on, you gotta back me up here. Even the biggest stars need the, need the little people to hold them up. <laughs> Whatever else we do today, first we should eat. We can't do anything on, on an empty stomach. You're right, let's hurry up and eat so we can start our investigation. <laughs> Okay. So, we were forced to eat breakfast with a murderer. And after our much needed, very, but a very annoying meal, we set to work looking around the school. Oh. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, I guess we look around the school. <laughs> There's Hero. Should I look for Owie? Oh, hey, Biakia! <laughs> so why are you in the boys' locker room? How did they get blood off of the poster? What are you doing here, Biakia? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? I'm reading. Come on. I was hoping I wouldn't be bothered in a place like this. Sorry. Anyway, it looked like everything's been returned to normal here. The coffee stains on the carpet are gone and the bikini model poster is back. It's just like with Sayaka. Monokuma must have done it. Okay, Byakuya continues to just be Byakuya. Uh, guess I shouldn't have expected anything less than that. I'm gonna go see Hiro. Can we, uh, mods, can we go out of emote only? I don't see the point anymore, but it's up to you guys. Oh, I didn't mean to go in there. Could it be? Nothing's changed on this floor. Hmm. The only difference is the gate block in the third stairs leading up to the third floor is gone. I guess that's where they want us to head next. I wonder what kind of crazy stuff is up there. <laughs> All right, so I guess we're going up to the crazy third floor. The third floor of Hope's Peak Academy. I wonder what we're gonna find this time. Holy shit. Okay, so we got more uh, classrooms. I didn't mind the peace and quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I mean, you can do emote only if you want. It's up to you guys. Get another metal plate. I guess I shouldn't expect to find an open window anywhere. Getting tired of this. Got another gotcha coin. I hate these drawings. I don't look at the clock too much these days. I mean, what's the point? I guess this is me getting used to being here, huh? It's a pretty empty feeling. This is one of the monitors Monokuma appears on. I'd much rather be able to watch regular TV. Okay. You want to see Genocide Jill? Okay. No. I think we're okay. Sakura. 
so in the end. The windows up here are also barred with metal plates. Not surprising, I suppose. So escape looks, uh, impossible. <sighs> I'd better check all the other metal plates again, just to be sure. Look at- why is there three bears now? Despair Squadron. Because we needed more bears. Uh, the window in this classroom are all blocked up with metal. Yeah, give me that coin! Mod Squad's name? Hey, if you want to call yourself that, sure. Uh... Alright. And away we go. We got a lot of other rooms to explore. So... What is this room? Darts? Looks like there's a gallery, too. Jesus. An art room. <gasps> oh, there is pool and darts! Oh, that's so fun! Yeah, we could live here forever. Let's see. A recreation room. A place for students to come and relax. I never would have imagined a school having a place like this. <laughs> well, no. No normal school would. It has Othello, Shogi, even a dartboard and a pool table. And look at this. They have even provided us with a remarkable number of magazines. Isn't it wonderful? Those will certainly be helpful in keeping our boredom at bay. Listen up! Ring, ring, ring! Hello there! Allow me to expound! We've got fashion, motorcycles, martial arts, video games, baseball, science, all kinds of magazines. Oh, but nothing dirty. This is a school after all. If you need a quick fix, check out the swimsuit mags. So then... Will you be adding to our collection as new issues come out? Too bad. Sorry, no can do. Even if I wanted to, right now magazines are kinda... Kinda what? Watch out! Oops! Nothing, never mind, no, no, no! Anyway, that's it for my expoundation, Bye bye What he just said. I know, right? It bothers me, too. Most unfortunate. Life here would be that much nicer if he could add some ni from new issues once in a while. How disappointing. Really? Time is frozen. There's a table here. It's kind of similar to the desks in the classroom, but also kind of not. There is nothing to be done. It is rather unfortunate about the magazines, but still... <laughs> I do believe our lives will improve significantly thanks to this little hideaway. These monitors really are everywhere. And cameras are too. Did we make it out of here alive? No, look at surveillance camera the same way again. Blah, blah, blah. A pool table isn't normal school equipment. Is this thanks to Monokuma or did the school buy it? There's a table. It's kind of similar to those in the last room. Oh, wait. I tried to... I guess the top is what we need? Oh, God. It's hard to get the differences. There we go. There's a copy of Othello here. I'm pretty bad at it, though. I have only played Othello once before. There's a dead body in the locker. It's a beat up old locker. It doesn't seem especially important right now, so I don't need to open it. This looks like some kind of bottle, but what the heck is it? Maybe it's just for decoration or something? Totally. There are all different kinds of magazines here on the shelf. They even have a bunch of monthly comics, but without getting regular updates, what's the point? There is even a dartboard. Did Monokuma put this here, or was it always part of the school? Again, same questions. Same answers. Uh, I think that's it? Oh, this couch is something different? Oh. 
A firm looking leather couch. It looks pretty comfortable. That's it. That's okay. I am glad we got that covered. Okay, yeah. You wanna lie on the couch? It doesn't look that comfortable. Kyoko! It would seem... The third floor is open this time. Opened up this time. After a brief investigation, it looks like there's a physics lab in an art room. Whew. I also found a huge machine and some kind of, of some kind in the physics lab. I wonder what it does. Ugh, I don't like this big hallway. <laughs> Booba. Oh, there's a Monokuma statue? Please. At first glance, this looks like any normal art room, but something about it seems off. Or multiple things. Is this a st statue of Monokuma? Who would ever want to make something like this? Still, the quality is surprising. I don't want to talk about the quality, really. Uh, it's a Venus statue. Yep, definitely very art roomish. There are paintings lining the walls. Is this really art? Just looks like a bunch of crappy graffiti. <laughs> what is that like pink penguin type looking thing? Oh, I was I was trying to get on the monitor, but okay. Uh Okay, I can get on the monitor. Come on, game. Come on, let me let me monitor. No! I know I can click on the fucking monitor. Jesus Christ. It doesn't change. Okay, you know what? Fuck it. That's fine. I didn't need it anyway. It's fine. It's a locker, but it doesn't seem like there's anything inside. How boring! This is a statue of Neo. I've never really heard of anyone using a Neo statue for life drawing for life drawing classes or whatever. All right, I guess I'll talk to Hifumi. <laughs> well, well, look at all this equipment. It certainly scratches that artistic itch of mine. Art supplies, of course, but they are, they've also collected all kinds of sculpting tools. So, Hifumi, do you like sculptures and figurines and stuff? Yes, indeed. Well, normally I limit myself to 2D, but figurines are like borderline 2D, so it's okay. I don't know how that's borderline, but okay. <laughs> I'm a fan of Cherambo, Pumpkinhead, and I especially admire anything that Saburo Rop Ron Ronpongi makes. Charambo's ability to express the movement of muscles is exquisite, it, as seen in his Mama Cat series. Pumpkinhead is a little uh, is like a little sculpture fairy representing this century's greatest quality. Saburo Ronpongi, meanwhile, is known for its his Mecha Musume series, which led to a worldwide tour. <laughs> Truly, they can only be regarded as the Elite Four. But one of your Elite is missing. You know nothing! Well, the Elite Three just sounds stupid now, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. Besides, that empty seat rightly belongs to me. <laughs> it begins, today begins my reign as the legendary ruler of the next century. I see, well, good luck with that. Let's ignore him. Oh, why does that look like? Oh, this is a repository that's attached to the art room. It's used to store. It's it's used to store different artsy things. Used. Bleh. 
There's something on the floor. Is that a picture of Leon Chihiro and Mondo? Oh god. Almost as if on its own, my hand froze. What I saw in that picture was Chihiro, Leon, and Mondo, and they were smiling. What is this? Questions started racing through my head one after another. Why is it only these three people? What are they doing here? How come they're smiling like that? When was it taken? Who took it? Where's the camera they used? How did they get it developed? And in the picture of the window in the classroom, there's no metal plate covering it. Which must mean wherever this picture was taken, it wasn't here at Hope's Peak, but that there was no time to find an answer. All the questions floating around my head were quickly drowned out by, oh. That's mine, give it back. Monokuma appeared out of nowhere and snatched the photo and any chance I had at answers evaporated. Ah. You peeked, didn't you? Well, they all had some pretty dazzling smiles, huh? Isn't that they were uh, definitely living their school life. It's like they ripped a page right out of the book of youth. What's going on with that picture, do you know? <laughs> I'm not telling you nothing. Why can't you give me a straight answer? Never mind, I don't even know why I bothered asking. There's a surveillance camera in here too, naturally the mastermind doesn't miss a single detail. There are wooden mallets hanging on the wall, if I had to guess, I'd say that they use them for making sculptures. Hi. A dolly. They must move it to uh, use it to move all these statues around. And of course, there's a monitor here too. Monokuma doesn't backseat. Pressing X to doubt. Wait, there's a fourth floor? Jesus. The fourth floor is where there's a pile of dead bodies. Holy shit. Taco's face. This is the physics lab. It's less like a classroom and more like some kind of research institute. Hey, Taka, don't you think this place is like some kind of research institute? Still no reaction. This machine obviously had some kind of purpose, but I don't know anything about physics to begin with, so I wouldn't have a clue where to start with this. What? Uh, okay. Hello. Oh, God. This is the equipment room. It's super disorganized and there's a strange chemical smell in the air. Uh -huh. <gasps> this place is so relaxing. So calming. The smell of formaldehyde is almost unbearable. I'm getting seriously excited. It's so tempting. Uh -huh. I want to just dunk myself right in it. Of course, Genocide Jack likes it. That just goes to show how disgusting it really is. Okay. I guess we're here now. There's a bunch of files here. Probably old lab files of research data. There's a monitor here, of course. Pendulums, wheels, rail segments, all the equipment is scattered all over. There's all they're all covered in dust too. They obviously haven't been used in a long time. <laughs> is 
a PVC pipe. This is a tarp. Uh, there isn't anything strange about it. Seems perfectly ordinary to me. Just an ordinary tarp. Okay. It really is unbearable! A nice long bath and a tub of formaldehyde. That's true happiness. Just thinking about it makes me want to... Ah! Okay, let's just leave. She's crazy. What's up with this ridiculously big machine? Watch out! What? <gasps> what? You want to do some quantum leaping? Phew. That's a time machine! Pretty awesome, right? It was designed by a student right here at Hope's Peak. The ultimate physicist. Although they don't go here anymore, they died during the tragedy. A time machine? Seriously? So it can go back in time? Okay, then, let me get in there. If I can go back to the past, then I can... This time I'll stop Mondo for sure! <laughs> Sorry, not possible. This particular time machine can only go back one minute. It comes in handy when you leave... When you, like, leave your pizza bagels in the microwave one minute too long. One minute? Wah -wah. You sound disappointed. <laughs> Actually, I was lying about the whole thing anyway. There's no such thing as time machines. What? Hey, um... Honestly, it's just an air purifier. In other words... It can produce clean air no matter where you're at. With that thing, you could even live on Mars. But what's with the discombobulating gravity and deadly low temperatures? You probably don't want to live on Mars. You guys? Anyway, this machine is the reason you guys have all, th have all this delicious air. So don't go messing around, messing with it. You break it and it's your butt. This huge thing is just an air purifier and more than that. To go out of your way to say something you know will hurt somebody who's already suffering? God damn you. Oh god. Talk is like fucking scarred, dude. They must use these for physics experiments and stuff. There's materials, pulleys, steel plates, magnets, and all kinds of stuff I don't even recognize. Hey, Taka, don't you think this place is like some kind of research institute? Okay. He's dead, Jim. He's dead. He's dead. Taco. So who haven't we come across? Okay, they're kind of still implying that I haven't explored everything in these rooms. So Sakura was in here. You know what I noticed about the third floor? There's no bathrooms. Damn shame. I wanna make sure I got everything in here first. I think, yeah, we're good. Hmm. <clears throat> God. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Chat, help. She's scaring me a lot.
Oh, they don't want me to leave this room specifically? Wait, what? You want me to look at it again? This gigantic piece of machinery is just an air purifier. Is that really true? Oh, this thing. This is... It's a digital camera. It's got some kind of weird anime style design on it. Oh. That's from the chapter start thing. It's kind of beat up, but it looks like it still turns on just fine. Yep, it still works. I should show the others later. I discovered lots of stuff. It was all strange, but I don't know if any of it was an actual clue. I'm just getting more confused. Maybe I should head to the dining hall and learn talk about it with everyone else. For now, I should head to the dining hall. It is- don't- no, don't- Alan, don't listen to Ryder, he's fucking with you. It's not- it's an air purifier. When I got back to the dining hall, the first thing I noticed was... Ah. Hina? I tried to talk to her, but my voice was immediately drowned out by the others as they rushed into the dining hall. Hina. Huh? I thought she was sick or something. Everyone rushed past me and crowded around Hina. Being surrounded by everyone like that, Hina looked really uncomfortable. Hina. Are you feeling better already? <laughs> yeah, I ate a few donuts and that really helped a lot. You do love those donuts. Mm. But wasn't it your stomach that was hurting? Well... My stomach ache kind of made me feel hungry, so, you know... <laughs> I guess my memory's kind of fuzzy lately. Mm. They say that a goldfish will eat what however much food and you give it, even if it's about to burst. Mm. Miss mm. Asahina is mm. pretty much mm. at the same, it looks like. Just a second! You of all people don't have any room to talk! Well... Anyway, I was worried about you. Sorry. Besides that, you... Huh? <laughs> Jeez, your knockers are huge! What the heck? Did you convince them to double up on milk production? Bastard! What? Stay away from her, fiend! Um... Oh my god. Anyway, first things first, we should talk about what we just found, right? Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. There was an art room on the third floor and it had all kinds of gear. <laughs> now I'll be able to recreate all my favorite anime characters. Speaking of anime, that reminds me, I found something while I was looking around. Perhaps. A digital camera? That's what it seems like. Hmm. Does it still work? Yeah, it seems fine. You know? Let's see it. What the heck? That thing is like a kid's toy. Yeah, it looks like it can store like five pictures, maybe? It doesn't even have a timer or anything. Well. On top of that, it, its appearance seems questionable. Is there... is this some kind of anime character? Strange. You know nothing! Rude! She's not strange! She's Princess Piggles from Demon Angel Pretty Pudgy Princess! Oh, you recognize this, Hifumi. <laughs> of course I recognize it! It's a super rare prize that was given away at a bingo contest at a big anime convention. You have any idea how much I had to pay that guy to get my hands on it? <laughs> yeah! Wait! That's my camera! What? Damnation! Where did you find it? In the physics lab. It's my most prized possession. I bought it... I brought it here with me, but I lost it on the first day along with my phone. Let's see... Why would it have reappeared in the physics lab? However... Ugh, but look at it! What? It got all messed up! Like when someone steals a sticker from your collection or you buy a secondhand shirt. Well, that's it. That's it. Uh, it's this is unforgivable. It's not mint conditioned. I don't need it anymore. But weren't you just saying how much it meant to you? <laughs> then may I have it? I might be able to find some sort of use for it. If any of you would like, sorry, would like to borrow it, please feel free to ask. Mm. Well, I can't really imagine any of us are gonna need to take any pictures or whatever. Yeah, true.
There is one piece of good news. There just so happens to be a rec room on the third floor. I've no doubt that our student life here will be even more enjoyable because of it. <laughs> will someone join me in a game of Othello sometime? He's scary. So, um... Uh, I wasn't able to help much with the investigation, but I did make one discovery. Could it be? It didn't happen to be a donut-related discovery, did it? What does that even mean? That's right. Never mind. It's about the nurse's office, remember? Well, there's one on the first floor. I remember, but it's locked. Yeah. Actually, not anymore. So then. Did you find any protein in there? Or even vitamin supplements would be fine. Mm. I did look. I did look, but no dice. Just a bunch of headache medicine and over-the-counter stuff. I see. That's disappointing. It is disappointing. Like the end of the world is already here. I'm not sure it's that disappointing. I searched the entire third floor, but all the windows in the halls and the rooms were blocked off. I wish they'd give us a re this arrest already for serious. Give me back my bright blue skies. <laughs> oh, just forget about it. Impossible. You make it sound like I dropped a nickel or something. Just to be sure, I went from one end to the other, testing each metal plate. None of them budged. So in the end, it would seem escape via the third floor is also is as impossible as we feared. I see. Oh god, do I really have to talk to Genocide Jill? Mm, yes, yes. The long road to maidenhood begins with a single step. That road may begin with only wrinkly old men, but it will end with strapping young adorable boys. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> okay. Hmm. I just remembered I saw Byakuya a little while ago. What? You Where? Where was he? What? You're kind of scaring me. Where was he? Uh, um, he was in the locker room. I, I, he had a huge stack of books he must have got from the library. No, 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 no. So that's where he was hiding. I won't let him get away from me. <laughs> huh? She just ran off. Is she okay? <laughs> We should not concern ourselves with her. I have a feeling Byakuya is hiding in the boys' locker room because it's the safest place from her. That girl can't get to him and kill him then. It's no use. Taka! Taka, Taka, Taka. Correct. It was a rather remarkable physics lab on the third floor. In the middle of the room, there was a machine bigger than anything I've ever seen before. Oh yeah, apparently it's an air purifier. Huh? huh? What's something like that doing there? It, is the device really that big? I really don't get it. Okay, I've heard what everyone else has to say, so now it's my turn. Can I tell you guys something? I found something that's been kind of bothering me. What? What is it? I found this weird picture in the repository. Apparently, Monokuma took it. Huh? A weird picture? You mean... Okay, no, it's not that kind of weird. It was a picture of Leon, Mondo, and Chihiro all together. Why? Those three. And the three of them were laughing. Oh. Um... It showed the three of them together, laughing. When could it have been taken? And there's more. In the picture, there weren't any metal sheets covering the windows. Well, then the picture wasn't taken here? Let's see. I don't recall hearing anything about them knowing each other before coming to this school. You probably just imagined it. Monokuma cast a spell on you. No, I saw it. I'm telling you. But if it wasn't taken before we got here, or after we got here... How about that? I bet they're all still alive! They left the school and then took that picture! Is that right? That's impossible, after all. We saw it with our own eyes. They're all dead. Either murdered or executed, and they're not the only ones. Monokuma killed Junko, and then there's... Sayaka. That wasn't an illusion. It was real, I'm sure of it. They all died. There's no way any of them are still alive. So we have to figure out what that picture was when that picture was taken. Monokuma most likely forged it. I can't imagine any other possibility. 
forged. Is that all there is to it? <sighs> Stay focused, man. Don't let Monokuma's bullcrap sidetrack you. <laughs> He's right, but more importantly... <laughs> on another topic, there is something that has been bothering me. I would like to discuss that. Discuss what? <laughs> there is also something that's been bothering me, which I would like to discuss. What's bothering you? Actually. It's about Hina. Huh? What? Me? <laughs> you said your stomach hurt, did you not? But I believe that was a lie. What really happened? Huh? <sighs> it varies from person to person, but whenever someone lies, they tend to have a way of showing it. It is called a tell, something that you can't hide, no matter how hard you try. Is that okay? Whenever Hina lies, the tip of her nose gets just a little bit longer. Huh? What, for real? <laughs> Actually, no. Huh? Oh. But your reaction just now confirmed it. You were lying. Oh! That's no fair! <laughs> if you're going to lie, at least try to lie convincingly. Hina. Be honest, were you lying about your stomach ache? Yes. I see. Why would you lie about that? That's it. Are you I'm feeling sure guilty about something? Just a second. No, that's not it at all. It's just, I mean, I have a reason for it. Sorry. To be honest, I didn't have a stomach ache. I did it because even if I came and told you the truth. Ah! I thought you wouldn't believe me. The truth! No. I saw it. I saw a ghost. Hmm? A ghost? You mean like that ghost? Hey. Is there more than one ghost? I mean, ghosts are... What the heck? See, I told you you wouldn't believe me. It's not that I don't believe you, but... Hina. I believe you. No matter what anyone else might say, I will believe whatever you say no matter what. Can you tell us exactly what happened? If you really mean that, Sakura, then okay, uh, I'll tell you. So, um... It happened last night. I was in bed, but I couldn't get to sleep. I just kept thinking about everything about that's happened up until now. I ended up getting more upset. So to try to cheer myself up, I thought I'd go get huh? some donuts. Donuts again? Honestly. And you ignored the rules regarding I'm nighttime? Sorry. I know, I'm sorry. I feel really bad about yeah. that. Anyway, please continue. But... So I left my room and headed for the warehouse. But then I started hanging, hearing a strange sound. Well... It was coming from the direction of the bathhouse, so I headed that way. The locker was halfway open, so I took a look inside. And I saw a human shape surrounded by a pale green light. There's no doubt who it was. It was Chihiro. Say what? Oh, no way, no. a ghost! Honestly. It is simply not possible. You must be mistaken. Just as in most cases of paranormal activity, it was born from your weakened mental state. Well, then. Then all we have to do is go see for ourselves, right? Let's go to the bathhouse and see what Hina <sighs> saw. It is a waste of time. Maybe there's no harm in it, right? If we don't find anything, that'll be the end of it. What? You're gonna go try and see a ghost? Is that really a good idea? It might put a curse on you. What the heck? You can wait here if you want. Please. I don't want to be alone. Take me with okay. you. What are you gonna do, Celeste? Going to do, Celeste? There is nothing to be done. I suppose I have no choice. Mm. How about Mr. Ishimaru? Are you gonna wait here? Oh. I guess that's a yes. Taka, still not talking. So, um... It was right here. I saw it right here in the dressing room. Um... Uh, I'm getting goosebumps. Come on, come on. La, la, Cthulhu, fa what? Please. Shut up! What if he actually shows up? Yeah. Where was it that you saw Chihiro's ghost? Well... Uh, I heard a sound, and when I opened the locker... I saw a kind of pale outline of Chihiro. Of Chihiro. Is this the locker? There was something in here. Inside the locker is a laptop. What's something like that doing hey. here? I remember seeing this. 
Oh, that's right. I saw it in the library before. It looks like a laptop. The laptop looks pretty old and it's all covered in dust. So... It's broken. I tried pressing the power button earlier, but nothing happened. It's broken, huh? Too bad. How did the laptop get from the library to here? I guess it, it's in sleep mode, but the power is definitely on. But I thought it was broken. I bet that Chihiro fixed it. After all, he was known as the ultimate programmer. Then perhaps... More importantly, Hina, you said you saw a green light, yes? Surely you did not mistake the light of the monitor for a ghost. <laughs> I'm surprised you were able to dress yourself in the morning. Ah! <gasps> Oh man, if I had the love loves clueless girls attribute, I would have fallen in love big time just now. Oh my god. I'm so glad I don't have it. I didn't really expect to find a friggin' laptop inside a friggin' locker, okay? Hey, come on. It's okay. I mean, anyone can make a mistake like that. Hmm. As a matter of fact, one time I thought I'd spotted a gray alien, but it turned out to be a tadpole. Don't compare what happened to me to one of your stupid delusions. Don't be mean. <laughs> Don't be mean. I was just trying to make you feel better. What if I get all depressed forever now? Listen, isn't this really strange? What's this laptop doing in here? Words. Maybe someone hid it here. But If that's the case, we found it pretty easily. Well, whoever put it in here, I don't think they were trying to hide it from us. What do you hey. mean? Haven't you noticed there's one big difference between this room and all the others? There's no surveillance camera. Somebody fucking mentioned it, I noticed! Yes, it's me. There's no camera in here, which means this is the spot where one where the mastermind is blind. Mm. Mm. You're saying mm. someone put the laptop mm. here so the mastermind wouldn't know about it's it? true. What Hina saw wasn't the ordinary glow of a computer screen. It was the figure of Chihiro shining pale hey. screen. Pale green. <laughs> I think it would be best if we investigated this laptop in a little bit more detail. It's just like Hyoko said, the display button display isn't on, but the laptop definitely has power. So then. First of all, we have to wake it up. Right. I started hitting random buttons on the keyboard. And it, the display instantly began to glow a pale green. There were a bunch of different icons on the desktop. There, the icon on the far left. It says Alter Ego. Hmm. Alter Ego literally means another self, I believe. In the field of artificial intelligence, it is not uncommon to create different aspects of a personality. You can consider it something like a pen name. Makoto. Could you let me see it, Makoto? With that, Kyoko moved. She moved the cursor over the alter ego icon. And when she double clicked it, the screen suddenly went dark. And then a voice spoke to us. You really came. Master, you're here. Chihiro's face appeared, taking up the entire display. Oh no! It's a ghost! Buddha and sweet baby Jesus save me! Calm down. It's not a ghost. What? what? Um... What is it? Anyway... I'm sure if we just talk to it, we'll find out. Hyoko began to type hands blurring across the keyboard. What are you? And then... Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Chihiro Fujisaki. <laughs> I always get so embarrassed introducing myself. That voice, the tone, and everything. Mm. It's Jihiro. I knew it. Alter Ego. I've heard about this kind of AI program, but I've never seen one for myself. AI program? That's right. It's how Chihiro earned his title of Ultimate Programmer. The AI lives in a computer, and by repeating different tasks, it gains knowledge and grows bit by bit. Apparently, Chihiro uses a support vector machine and reinforcement learning to develop it. Eventually, he came up with a breakthrough in artificial intelligence design. Support vector machine? Reinforcement learning? To put it simply, it's a learning method for computers. Um, if you want to know more, it. just I'm Google sure it, okay? It. In other words... But if this AI continues to grow, it will become more than just a piece of software to help people. Some say that an AI like this may someday replace people. And that is why it is called Alter Ego. A fine choice then, I must say. It can create memories, have thoughts, and grow up. The process isn't much different from how humans work. 
If you were to raise your own AI that way, it would make perfect sense to refer to it as your alter ego. I see. A second perfect personality that can never forget or grow old. That's what Chihiro created. That's alter ego. Kyoko, how do you know so much about this? Are you okay with this? Anyway, so he fixed the broken laptop and put his own program on there? That is what that this means, yes? Then he brought this machine to this dressing room where the mastermind would not be able to see it. <laughs> but you know, all this about master whatnot. Yes, yes. <laughs> I believe I'm on fire! Huh? I thought you were only in the 2D! Da, 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 da. This is the most excellent 2D possible! Huh? But he's a guy and also a computer program! I feel as if... Oh, that aspect is no problem! I mean... That aspect? Anyway... What? Let's talk to him a little bit more. Kyoko typed away rhythmically. How much do you know about what's going on? Master. Master only gave me a general idea. Well. I do know that things have become very grave. He found himself caught in this without warning. Kyoko immediately shot out another question. Why are you here? That's well. Are you asking what Master had planned for me? He wanted me to analyze the massive number of files stored on this laptop. I believe the files are related to the school, but the protection on them is surprisingly strong. So it's taking me a little longer than I thought. Master. And he's what Master might must have been thinking. The fact that the files are protected so tightly means they must contain some important secret. For example, perhaps the secret of this school? While I was busy struggling to make a sound, Kyoko pushed forward and asked her next question. How much longer until everything's unlocked? That's well. It's gonna be a while. I'm definitely gonna do it, so you can just leave it to me. I see. Because of how long it would take, he designed Alter Ego to handle the work, uh, workload. Smart! It also appears that the work remains un in un in uninterrupted, even after his death. Once again, Kyoko typed quickly. Keep it up, but be careful not to let the Mastermind notice you. Don't worry, I've, I've got a secret plan already, just in case. Actually, I can see what's going on using my built-in webcam, so if anyone suspicious shows up... <laughs> I'll just scream for help really loud. It's a pretty basic plan, I have to say. Yes, indeed. Oh, that is fine during the day, but nighttime is a concern. Why? Are you okay with have this? Have you forgotten? All of our rooms are completely soundproof. Once we close our doors, he can scream as loud as he wants, but he won't hear we won't hear a thing. Okay, then how about once it's nighttime, we each take turning turns guarding the dressing room. However, there's a good chance the Mastermind would notice us all going in and out of the dressing room like that. What can we do? So then. Once nighttime comes, I'll leave the door to my room open. Then there's no way I can miss Alter Ego yelling. But... If you leave your door open all night, then... It's true. There's a chance I may become a victim myself, I know. However... But I'm not as weak as you may think. I wouldn't go down without a fight, I assure you. There once... There was an undeniable strength in her voice when she said that. She was totally confident she would be okay. That confidence was somehow similar to Byakuya's tone, but at the same time, different. Yeah, it had an entirely different feel, for sure. Like someone who'd been dropped out onto a battlefield versus someone who'd been born on a battlefield. I felt like that was the fundamental difference. I was pulled out of my thoughts by the voice suddenly emanating from the laptop. Would you mind if I ask a few questions? I haven't seen Master for a while. While you, when you got here, I thought it was him, but... Is Master... For a split second, Kyoko seemed to not know what to do. But she recovers just as fast and quickly began retyping. Her answer was clear, concise, and direct. Chihiro is dead. Mondo killed him. Okay, then. I see. To be honest, I knew all along. I knew the chances that Master would survive this situation were very low. So I was prepared for this moment. <laughs> it's like... I feel kind of sorry for her. Um... I can't even imagine how it must feel to lose your other self. <laughs> it is simply... It is a simple computer program. It does not have feelings. Uh, Are you sure about that? Shall we go? Anyway, that's enough for today. If we linger here too long, the mastermind will start to suspect something. And then Kyoko typed one last sentence. I'll come back later. Please do! It's a promise, okay? Bye-bye!
The AI seemed totally different from when we'd first arrived. He seemed upbeat. Was it just because he was following his programming, or could he have actually been worried about us? Could it be? Uh, what's wrong, Hero? You know? Nothing. I was just wondering if we might be able to get this laptop online. Then we could call for help from the outside. But this is a dressing room. I don't think you can get online from here. Well? If we take it out of here and find somewhere that does have online access... Eh? It's way too dangerous. The mastermind would find out in no time. Uh, um... Yeah, true. Indeed. There's no time for taking needless risks. For now, I'll monitor the progress of the file analysis. I'm confident we'll uncover some kind of clue once it's finished. Hmm. This feels like a this feels like a detour more than anything else, but I suppose it can't be helped. Of course. For now, all we can do is wait for Alter Ego to finish his work. You know? So, should we get going? It's true. <laughs> Goodbye, we'll be back, I promise. Oh. Come on, Hifumi, let's go. Bye. As soon as we were on the hall, Hina let out a joyful shout. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I ended up doing something totally awesome, right? As if he had been waiting for his cue. Oh. <laughs> Hina has gained enough experience to level up! What's the matter? What was this awesome something? Monokuma. What the heck? You guys all seem in remarkably good spirits. Did something happen? No, 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 nothing in particular. <laughs> Keeping secrets? No fair! I demand an exclusive interview! Denied, denied, super denied! What the heck? Just because you demand something doesn't mean we have to do it. Say what? Do it. You mean like, do it, do it? Wait, what? What do you mean, do it, do it? Yes. Ew, gross! You said do... Just worse. You said it first! <laughs> We were just talking about going to the bathhouse. We had not had a chance to relax in some time. Huh? <sighs> ah, this bear. Unfortunately, the bathhouse is not divided into men and women sections. <laughs> so we decided to do rock, paper, scissors to decide which group would go first. Hina won the match for us, and that is why we are all so pleased. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Speaking of which... <laughs> Okay, boys, why don't you head on back to the dining hall or something? We're gonna take a nice long bath. Hey, come on. Jeez, what are you gonna do, right? What are we gonna do, right? We lost, fair and square. <laughs> well, ladies, shall we go? Celeste didn't hesitate coming up with the ruse, and her poker face didn't even flinch. So, she and the other girls headed back into the dressing room. Oh. Oh. Damnation! <laughs> we totally lost another day without getting to take my very first bath here! Uh, um... Yeah, but tomorrow for sure. You'll definitely get that bath tomorrow. Okay, so should we head back to the dining hall now? Hey! Hold on! Hey! Hey! Something strange here. Very strange. Strange? What do you mean? <sighs> the perfect chance for you to sneak a peek! <laughs> That's... Without a doubt. You're absolutely right! I thought you were all about the 2D. <laughs> all of you need to shut up, sit down, and listen to what I have to say. An opportunity like this doesn't come along very often. It's the ideal setting of a man's fantasy. I was forced to ask myself, should I sneak into the bathhouse like Monokuma said, or just go quietly back to the dining hall? No, I can't do it. I can't treat the girls like that. Let's just head back to the dining hall. Eh? What? What, what? What about your man's fantasy? I'm not sure a real man's fantasy should be about spying on girls and stuff. It should be more about your hopes or your dreams of adventure or whatever. But anyway, I'm not going to spy on them. I see. I can't even describe my bitter disappointment. That primo fan service could have been yours. We headed back to the dining hall, leaving Wanakuma standing there alone. But to be honest, even I was a little reluctant to turn down the offer. He admits it. That's good. <laughs> it's like... My fantasy! <sighs> I guess you dig the real thing just like any other guy, huh? Mm-hmm. The only reason I care is... Uh, is because it's a good reference for creating figurines. A real live woman is useless to me, but looking at their naked form might be okay. 
Maybe. No way. If the girls heard you say that, we'd all be dead meat for sure. Meanwhile, we heard the buzzing of a very uh, busy, busy voices growing louder. The girls had finished their baths and joined us in the dining hall. Ow, you got it. Best girl. Thank you for the 11 months, Zulkia. Man, what a nice bath. This is fine. Getting a chance to stretch out and relax after all this time was a true pleasure. Indeed. Of course. Normally, after a long bath, I like to make myself a nice protein coffee, but... <laughs> Sorry, no time for that. So in the end... That's what I figured. Huh? huh? Actually... We were just saying in the bath how it was about time for you to get up to something. Because... After, well, after seeing how happy we were, an evil little monster like you would never let that last for long. Hmm. You're all so terrible to me! My entire <laughs> existence! Everyone's so cold and mean! Even after I got presents for you all! Presents? Well now, well now, well now, well now. I got your attention! <laughs> then let's head to the gym where your presents await! See ya later! No questions, no dilly-dallying, get a move on and everything! Clear. Oh, um, what is this? Why are you scheming this time? Seem... He's probably going to repeat the same thing again, providing us with a motive to get things moving. Huh? Again? I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. <sighs> Me either. I'm like totally traumatized. However, it's okay. We have Alter Ego. I'm sure he'll find something that'll help us. So for now, correct. We have to just endure it. Come with, come what may. It's Christmas time? Oh! Oh! That's why we get presents. You guys are right. It's Christmas time. With heavy feet, we made our way to the gym, but when we arrived, there was already someone waiting for us. What? To be kept waiting by the likes of you. Rest assured, we, if we had access to firearms, you'd all be dead. Yakia, Did you get here early? <laughs> did you forget how to walk? Is that why you're late? It's simple. Right foot, left foot, right foot. <laughs> hmm, the same as always, I see. Her, on the other hand. Aw, no heck? genocide, Jill. She's back to her Debbie down herself. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I heard what sounded like a sneeze and she went back to her old self. <laughs> so now she goes from manic to depressive whenever she sneezes? Seems kind of late to add that tin to the mix. <laughs> Why does heck? everyone keep making fun of me? I hope you all win the lottery or get hit by a bus. <sighs> So when you want to say something mean, then you can talk, huh? Well. Anyway, it looks like everyone's here. So then. Which means... Ruh row. Oh boy. You guys? It looks like everyone's here! So then, let's get started! What? Come on, out with it. What kind of motive have you prepared for us this time? However... Whatever you subject to us, we will not break. Okay. Yeah, that's right! We're not gonna lose to you ever again! Come on! You don't have to get so defensive! Calm down! I've decided to change things up a bit this time! Up until now, I've been using the whoosh of the north wind to get you all moving! Ah! Sometimes you gotta use the sun to light a fire under someone's butt. Without further ado, I give you this. Ten million dollars. I've prepared this graduation present for whichever lucky student makes it out of here alive. What do you think? It's ten million bucks. Ten million smackaroos! It's like totally wowy wow wow, am I right? So that's the motive that you've prepared, is it? Ten million dollars is... It's not nearly enough. It's true. When it comes to motives, money certainly is the gold standard, so to speak. Whether it's in, in a mystery novel or the real world. But... What are you saying? There's no way we'd kill each other over money! Of course. She's right, you can't simply purchase a person's life. Uh, um... You can say 10 million or however much. I don't give a crap, for serious. Oh, he cares. 
He's still salty about his $10,000 crystal ball being broken. He probably, you know how many crystal balls he can buy with this? <laughs> That's a lot. At least two. <laughs> Whether it's 10 million or any other amount of money. No, not even just the money. From now on, no matter what you do, we won't kill our friends. <laughs> Come on, stop trying to act tough. I can't wait! I can't wait! The most important thing is to live a pure and moral communal life. Monokuma disappeared, leaving his words out on stage along with a massive sum of money. Um, There's nothing to worry about, right? Nobody would kill a friend for money, right? <laughs> Have you so quickly forgotten the lesson from last time? You can't judge others by your own standard. Yeah, there might be someone who's having money problems. Personally, I've earned over one million dollars from my gambling efforts. My life is comfortable. <laughs> I'm telling you! Hey, Fumi, what about you? No, nothing! I'm a super popular content creator! I don't have any problem making enough to maybe buy my comics and DV- This is a total lie. Oh my god. This is a total fucking lie. One, you cannot tell me that he's a super popular content creator. And two, super popular content creators don't make shit, dude! Ah! You think we make money? That's so funny. Ha. Huh. I almost forgot to laugh. Hey. Just stop pressing others about their personal finances is ugly. Ugly? <laughs> Don't worry. Either way, whatever's going to happen will happen without warning. I do feel personally attacked. <laughs> they think I make money. That's so funny. Like anyone would give content ah! creators money. You have no idea how big you have to be to make like a super comfy living. Like, holy shit. <laughs> Got to be like super up there, man. <laughs> Thank you for the hundred bits. I appreciate it. Like I make enough to get by, but goddamn, nope, not like extremely comfortable. Uh uh. <clears throat> this isn't as such. It is soon. The doors to the dining hall will be locked and ent. Okay then. Sweet, Sweet dreams! dreams. Hmm. Hey. Before we separate, let me remind you. Starting tonight, I'll be leaving my room door open to make sure nothing happens to Alter Ego. But just because my door is open, don't assume that will make an e me an easy target. Because... Or the predator may sp suddenly find itself the prey. Her voice was calm and composed, but it was clear she meant what she said. You know? Okay, okay, let's everyone just head back to our rooms. How about that? And don't think about that whole money thing. Got it? Good. Let's take a break. Mm. How was that? Pretty good, right, Taka? Taka still mm. hasn't talked. <laughs> as soon as I was back in my room, I crawled in the bed. Money, there's no way that's gonna get anyone to kill anyone else. I told myself that, but deep in my heart, I was still troubled. After all, I thought the same thing last time about having our secrets revealed. Even if the reason for it seems completely nonsensical, a murder can still happen. That's the lesson that we learned. But this time, this time it's different, I'm sure of it. Because the program, because of the program Chihiro left behind, Alter Ego, we finally have some small hope to grasp onto. As long as we have that, then I'm sure. Yeah, tacos. Mm. <clears throat> little kids have it so easy because they can just put Lil in front of their name and right off the bat, everyone thinks they're cute. Well, fine then. I want everyone to start calling me Lil Monokuma. See, just by adding that, my cuteness goes up by at least like 10. Yeah, the world doesn't have nearly enough Lils. More Lils would lead to the salvation of the world. But just imagine Lil Arsonist, Lil War Criminal, Lil Destruction of the Environment, Lil Hit and Run, Lil Death Tax, Lil Great Depression. Even the darkest subject can suddenly become brighter. Our dreams are expanding, ding, ding. Bruh. Dinga donga bingo bonga. Good morning, 
everyone. Get ready to greet. All right, time to head to the dining hall. Little dinga donga binga bonga. Oh, you can't even look at other areas. Interesting. Little depression sounds kind of cute. No, don't say that. Ah, uh, God, I don't want to talk to you. Ah, well. Morning. Actually, it's a great morning. A morning that has blessed my entire future. Really, it feels like another morning to me. <laughs> Maybe you can't tell, but my soul is positively overflowing with strawberries today. <laughs> That was bizarre. Hifumi is gonna kill someone. That's it. He's gonna do it for the money, because content creators don't make money. That's just it. Um. I, I, I want to talk to them, but I also do have to get off. <laughs> this is like a really awkward place to stop. I'm so sorry. Um. But yeah, we'll do all of chapter three on uh, Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday stream. Still keeping the same schedule for next week. However, next Wednesday, I will not be streaming. I'm going to be filming all day. So that would that deletes a Dark Souls 2 stream. So Danganronpa streams are still good for next week. But anyway, I'm sorry I'm cutting the stream.